Hello and welcome to session number 18 of Outliner's Guide to Ladaria. I hope everyone has had a wonderful week. I had a blast, as you see, as you might have seen lately, of just getting entirely lost in uh, the real the release of Century. <laughs> but besides that, yeah, I'm excited to get back right into D and D. Let's go get our friends. Hello, hello. Hold on. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hi. How wonderful it is to have you all <laughs> back here once again. Why are you laughing? Did we start? <laughs> yes, oh. we're streaming. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> Hi. Also, forgot to have the thing. Yeah. Oop. <laughs> Ta-da. Hey! Oh, you're not even on God. TTS! <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. fine, we're prepared! Saying that says. <laughs> ah, how were your weeks? Everything everything good? Everything good? <laughs> well, My uh, week was amazing. And some, <laughs> so, some of us got to relax and some of us got to have school some of things. Us did 13 this was assignments. <laughs> I had final. I had three yeah. of them all on the same day. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, oh, my man. Friday was wild. Damn. <laughs> three? Yeah, three finals oh. all on the same day. I'm oh. glad you survived. Just barely. Hmm. Ooh, okay. All right. So, today, uh, for today's summary. Wait, no, I need... I need uh, I need Austin here for this. I'm here, I'm gone. I'm almost here. Hello. Wait, why? <laughs> oh. Ominous. It's, what are you gonna do to it's me? It's gonna be in. It's gonna be in game. Ah, uh, yes, it is. Oh my! <laughs> really set that just... bar high for me, so I can disappoint <laughs> again. <laughs> I'm just watching Austin slowly loading in. 44 percent Wait, I'm not still streaming, am I? Oh. 50 <laughs> percent Yeah, we're watching you procrastinate. Don't we worry. see those cat videos. I'm almost there, guys. Yeah, guys, we're gonna go TTS right now. Oh, it's cat eating a Pop-Tart. We've seen it. Here we Why go. Why is your ping a second? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you are the one who's secretly streaming this. Oh, wow. Here we go. <laughs> oh, 68%. boy. Guys, get ready. Here it comes. What in the world? Went up 2% uh, in the last 10 seconds. To, to <laughs> offer some context. Oh, yeah, Sid? Uh, no, no, no. Austin, without going into detail, did you resolve your image issue? Yes. Good. You okay. did? Has oh, oh that's awesome. All right, that's good to I know. I think I can turn mod caching back on. Can... Oh yeah. Play games again. I think that's why it was so slow. Mm -hmm. So, um, it, Dennis will join us about, in about half an hour to forty minutes. Uh, <laughs> but uh, today he he was supposed to be the one who would do the recap. Um, so he, he provided the recap for me. Um, oh. Uh, da, da, da. Okay. So. Let's get started. Why do I have an impending <gasps> oh, man? There oh. it is. Oh my god. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I'm going to be I'm going to be reading what he wrote to me. <clears throat> oh. Our party started out in front of a big cave, which entrance was okay. guarded by those water snake wave elementals. After discuss hmm. discussing for a good while, Squeak turned into Squirt? Question mark? His spider form and, and checks out the cave from the inside. In the meanwhile, <laughs> Raquel takes off her hood, which scares Brooke, because he failed the wisdom saving throw. Take notes, this will be important for later. Taka and Talix are also off to the woods to build a raft. <laughs> I love my hands off. <laughs> when suddenly, the witch appears, walking over the water. All the elementals rush, rush over to her to greet her. 
While passing the group, they get talking, and the witch invites them into her cave. Even though it was highly suggested that Pontifex should stay back to build on the raft, everyone went into the cave. <laughs> In the cave, the witch admits that she was the one to make Raquela forget everything, but only because she wanted it. Raquela really wants her memories back, and after a few warnings from the witch and a genius trade offered by her group, Crystal Ball plus Ruby Fang, um, uh, he made uh, he made her bring back Raquela's memories. But once Raquela regains her memories, she gets really angry at Tekka. So she tries to fireball Tekka, but also hits Brooke. Everyone tries to fight her without hurting her. Brooke gets charmed again, so he's out of the combat again, and Pontifex finally manages to look into her mind to understand the cause of her anger and pain. Upon getting <laughs> getting pregnant from a Plurnan man and receiving a tiefling baby, Raquela decided to kill both her child and her husband, which left her in big distress. Tekka leaves the cave on his log raft, Pip gets sent out of the cave because he's too young, and Pontifex appreciates the witch, which she appreciates. And once everyone leaves, Squeak reveals to the audience that the witch is named Brianwell? And her meets with, <laughs> with, with presumably Pips, Pips's granny, um, who might be referred to as Nyla. The end. <laughs> nice. Hey! hey! Pretty succinct. Yeah. To be fair, uh, Talix gave her a crystal castle, not just a ball. <laughs> it's, it's a big, 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 big deal. <laughs> yeah. A castle is more than a ball, Dennis. <laughs> uh, we mean, shall let him know the difference between balls and, ca and castles. I will let him know very firmly the difference between a ball <laughs> and a castle. Maybe um, Brian, Brian Well, that was totally <laughs> Brian Well. Brian Well, yeah, yeah. Uh, here is uh, Dennis's witch spiration. Nice. Nice. Let me load in the map. Oh yeah, we didn't have a cave map. It is good enough. Okay. All of your minis are over here. That's us. <laughs> it's you. <laughs> Pip and Tekka don't have to wait more than a handful of minutes before the rest of the party joins up with them outside of the witch's cave. The frozen path takes them to the, ri to the river's edge, and once everyone has hopped off, it melts before everyone's eyes. Raquela, who was being gently led by Brooke, lets herself drop to the ground, where she sits with her face in her hands. Her sobbing finally ceases. After a few seconds, her hands part. The only person who has yet to see her face is Tekka, and she seems intent on keeping things that way, as she adjusts her hood slightly before turning towards him and simply saying, I'm so sorry. I accept your apology. You do? So easily? I... I don't deserve it. Your life has been difficult. I will not add to it. Raquel looks down, stays silent. I feel a, perhaps I have come up with a new quote out of this whole ordeal. I am not exactly finalized on the wording, but uh, Something along the lines of, be careful what you wish for, lest it come true. Maybe now is not the time.
Well, we can follow the river south and, uh, and be off to Ari in a hurry. Maybe since we're going downstream, we could uh, save some time, make up for lost time here. We should finish building this raft. I agree. I'll get to it. Um, Ooh, uh... with Brooks's help, uh, um, after she she requests, um, Raquel pulls herself up uh, back to her feet and sort of like does like a dusting motion from her robes, but it's not like there is much to do. Uh, they're just covered in mud at this point. Uh, um, and she says. If I may say something, that, uh, that item, that castle, do you know what it is about? Talix was kind of, like, deliberately moving himself away from the group to work on the rafts, but, uh, after she addresses him, he'll just kind of halfway look over his shoulder. I think it just looked pretty. Thought we determined it wasn't magical, correct? Did we? <laughs> did, did check for that, right? Yeah, it wasn't magical. <laughs> um, okay. I have nothing to give you for helping me today, but I can give you information. About? There are some secrets that uh, Lidarans keep very close to themselves. Some things, the way we see certain things, the way we experience certain things is so different from your viewpoint that, uh, well, sharing certain information could be more harmful than beneficial. But in this case, I think... I think I can give you something. It won't hurt you. And I think you can be trusted with it. Um, she... She gestures vaguely just in, in Talix's direction. Um... Pauses for a moment, just collects her thoughts. Uh, and says, that castle uh, exists. What you had was a little replica, but uh, anyone would recognize it at a glance. Anyone who is from Lidaria, especially anyone who is from uh, outside of the peninsula. I think it is a sign that you had something like that, because... That is where I should be going now. That castle is a very, very special place for, ma for many Lidarians. And uh, I will not tell you why. I don't think you are prepared to know. But I will give you directions if you ever decide to see with your own eyes. Is that... Would you find that to be acceptable? Certainly. I have a map right here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Talix laid out his journal. Uh, yeah, Pontifex pulled out the big map. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Pontifex spreads out the map uh, uh, of the peninsula, and Raquel's finger sort of like glides from the right end, uh, eastern end of it, all the way to the left uh, uh, edge, and then says, This map is not big enough. Ah. That's. Uh... It's off the peninsula, you said, right? Yes. How far in? How many days travel from, say, the western edge here? Many. The easiest way to find it would be to, to stick to the coast, the southern coastline, slowly heading up north, 
until eventually you come across a, a certain river. It's You'll recognize the river in question because there will be uh, two statues on both ends of it where the river meets the sea. Then follow that river until you meet a road and follow that road to the northeast until you find a lake. That's where you'll find a castle. Okay. Well, perhaps we shall meet you there someday? You hear from beneath her hood something that sounds like just a very, very slight, like just the very beginning of a, of a small chuckle. And she says, perhaps, perhaps we will. As for you, um, Tekka. Yes. I believe what I said earlier about curses. Curses never come from nature, they never come from the world. They always come from people. I believe that if Plurnans and Lidarians were never meant to have children together, then they just would not. In the same way you cannot breed a red beak with a pelican. But if having children is possible, and they are not born looking simply like their parents, but they all shared this, this appearance. It's something unnatural, not in a, not in an insulting way. It's, it's magic. It's a curse. Somebody is doing this. Is a very big conjecture to make. Raquel lowers her head, looks down on the ground, twirls her fingers, doesn't really reply to that. I am Tekka and no one else. I do not believe this influence or this curse. My life is a gift. You are strong, Tekka. I'm sure that whatever obstacle you might find on your path it will not stop you. None of them will. One final thing before I go. The witch. She required payment for what I asked of her. And now I remember. She asked for my body. This appearance I have is hers. It seems that with her body, I have also acquired a, a fraction of her power. I was never able to do what I did before. I think I can do something good for you. Uh, and then she turns <clears throat> to her right where Pontifex is, and she extends a hand and says, May I? Yeah. This is it first. Uh, was she like holding her hand out in like a handshake? Uh, yeah, like uh, <clears throat> like she wants to take your hand. Uh, yeah, he'll he'll hold his hand out and let her make the move. Uh, Pontifex, can you make an Arcana check? Hmm. 
<clears throat> Somebody as attuned to the forces of magic as yourself uh, um, can easily feel that, uh, despite the fact that Raquel doesn't seem to really be doing anything besides holding your hand in hers, um, she she appears to be doing something, and you just feel it's 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 slight. It's a bit of like this this wave <clears throat> of energy sweeping over you for for just a moment, and then it fades, and it feels feels like you are submerged. Uh, in uh in the river again like deep in your meditation uh feeling uh, feeling all on your own just with your own thoughts <clears throat> with uh nothing and no one around and then the sensation just fades um and Raquel lets go of your hand and says the sea it is cruel it swallows everyone who dares to leave the shores of our land. If you ever were to be thrown in its waters for any reason, this blessing will give you one chance to escape. Hopefully you will never need it. Then she extends her hand toward the Talix. Well, uh... Okay. And for Are you referring to the sea of chaos. As uh, she takes Alex's hand, and Alex also feels like just a just a, a moment uh, uh, of magic uh, uh, washing over him. Um, Raquel turns towards Pontifex and uh, tilts her head to the side and says, "I speak of the sea." Alex knows what she's talking about, right? Uh, yeah. It's it's reasonably common knowledge that uh, um, nobody is allowed to build boats unless it's on a river. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, uh, Tekka and Pepe in particular would, would, would have had this like, drilled into their minds uh, since uh, like, uh, they were really young. Um, no Lidarian ever sets out far into the sea, even the Atara Philly, who whose entire lives uh, revolve around rivers and the sea, um, they will never go far from the shoreline. Um, there's this just large belief that one must never go into the sea. Hmm. There, but like the explorers know something about uh, what's out there, right? Haven't, or has that not been encountered? Do we know what's do we know what's in the water or what's in the sea around Ladaria? I don't think this has ever come up. Okay, I thought I thought explorers knew that. Besides, uh, you know, besides the sea of chaos. So. Right. Okay. Um. Ominous. <laughs> okay. I uh, let me let Sorry, me just I check. Thought, I thought the third and the explorers knew that. I I don't know why. Oh, now uh, you're saying that. I'm like vaguely remembering. I, yeah, I thought the... I thought it was in the in the guidebook even. Yeah, okay, yeah, 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 that's that's what I'm checking right now about the guidebook. All right. Uh, like right at the end. Uh, <clears throat> uh, known effects. All right, here we go. Dangerous. Um. Never sail a boat across the sea. Lakes and rivers, however, are safe to cross. But why? <laughs> oh, it never says why. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> but why? <laughs> but why? <clears throat> Hi, Dennis. Hello. Hello. Hi. Have I missed anything major yet? You Just missed a, a, a summary. <laughs> what do you mean? But it was good, right? Yes. Yeah, yes. I like the drawings yeah, yeah, yeah. a lot. Well done. It's all right. It wasn't so like Jen, a big deal or anything. I, at my, the very my, least, I don't have to live up to it. It will be a big hurdle. I'll be fine. I'll be fine. At the very least, we know Jamuel must have known something. So, just one more thing that we need Jamuel for. <laughs> yeah, um, gotta, uh, hello, you know, it's been a great time, but you should really get going. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, uh, Dennis, uh, uh, you're, you're still outside and talking to Raquel. Uh, you guys have decided to finish building the raft. And before she heads off, she said, One, the miniature castle that Alex just raided away is a miniature of a real castle that is uh, uh, far into Ledaria, beyond the peninsula. And she gave specific instructions on how to get to it. And she said that that's where she will go to next. That's uh, pretty hype. Second, mm -hmm. she insisted on the fact that she believes that uh, uh, tieflings are ultimately cursed. Uh, that something that someone is doing this to them uh, is, is affecting their appearance. And lastly, she has offered, and she's doing this to every party member, so far she has done Pontifex Italics, so, um, a blessing, which in her words... Uh, um, it will give you a chance to escape if you ever fall into the sea, uh, which she claims to be deadly. And we were just talking about this, how like it's generally common knowledge to never build a boat, never sail on the sea around Lidaria, um, because supposedly it's dangerous. And in particular, the, uh, uh, the native people of Lidaria uh, know this by heart. And the Polarians just know that uh, uh, not to do it. <laughs> <clears throat> and that's where we're at. Is, is there sort of like a, a distance where you know like how far is too far? No more than 100 feet. Okay. That's roughly what Piff would have learned. So like fishing on a shoreline is still possible, but you, and you can build like a tiny boat that stays really, really close to the shore. But you're, you're, uh, as far as Pip knows, that's just risky. Like you just shouldn't do it. So uh, it's far before you actually reach the Sea of Chaos. It's just in the yes, water. Yes, it's still in uh, the water. Around the, mm -hmm. around the continents. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was just clarifying. Like for um, for 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 context, in terms of uh, um, like distances, uh, Pontifex's map. Uh. Like, everything gray around here is still water. Uh, there is... The, the, the start of the Sea of Chaos, where the elements start to affect the, uh, the sea, uh, are beyond the distance, like, beyond the boundaries of the map. So all of this is still just normal water. Mm -hmm. But the safe distance from the shore is, like... That. It's very <laughs> small. It's, like, you know, right... Uh, it's, even pointless to draw it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Probably closer than that. <laughs> right. <clears throat> and as you know, Plurnans have arrived on Lidarion on flying ships. So they haven't actually been in the sea. Just eaten by dragons. And in, Perhaps. I'm, I'm assuming that means that they've flown over the sea a decent amount. Mm -hmm. Haven't yeah. like seen Oh, there's a 9,000 mile long mega water dragon just surfing, yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> uh, has Squeak returned? Yeah. Okay. And uh, for, does everyone accept Rekela's uh, blessing? Mm -hmm. Is it the same blessing to everyone? Mm-hmm. Sure. Okay, Hip all press. she does is touching, like, everyone's hand for a few seconds and then letting go. One more point in constitution. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, not, not that powerful. <laughs> Just in case uh, something goes wrong on our little rafting trip. <laughs> just in case, yeah. just in oh, case you go a little bit too far. I wasted on the rafting. A bunch of rapids and a giant waterfall right at the end of this. <laughs> <laughs> Always slips my mind. Right before it gets Aria. <laughs> I feel like something needs to be addressed here. Uh, you are giving us a blessing to help us leave the sea in the event that we fall into it. And you believe this to be useful. Uh, I, have... I have many questions, but primarily why? Uh, and also, how? It is all I have to give. Like I said, my... What powers I have, they... 
came with this body, um, I would give you anything I could, but this is all I feel I am capable of giving you. I suppose the witch of the river is not just a witch of the river. Perhaps she has a connection to all sources of water. That opens many doors to many other questions, but I think I'm done with her. All the river does lead to the sea. This is all I have to offer. Uh, my knowledge and my blessing. The rest, well... I can only wish you good luck. Same to you. She glances at each of you. Nods. And uh, she will begin to head off. Uh, just walking slowly with her makeshift... Uh, uh, <clears throat> with a makeshift cane, uh, heading across the river. She'll get to its edge, and then she'll um, sink one end of the stick in, in the water. And just as you saw the actual witch do, uh, part of the river freezes, and she slowly crosses it. And she will leave. Oh. For someone who didn't have South Power before, that seems quite natural. Some things are instinctual. Hmm. Feel that perhaps if this body belongs to a, a witch that is so attuned with water, then perhaps it is as natural as uh, breathing. You do not will your heart to beat. Perhaps she does not will uh, the ability to cross water. I don't know. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. I am I guess everyone is more favored to one skill than the others. Well, we, uh, we helped the woman. Uh, we solved the primary issue of... Uh, Travelers being assaulted near the rivers by the elementals, hopefully. All in all, a fairly productive day. I feel good about myself. Things Things could have gone much worse today. We should be relieved it ended the way it did. To say I don't wish I had some kind of soap to wash out that woman's memories, but uh... do you ever tell us what you saw? Uh, I we don't believe both. I did. Um, hmm. I thought I thought some of it got said, but uh, probably not the details. Probably not the details. We should get going. <laughs> <laughs> Talix is still trying to tie these tie these branches together. Yep. Take a little time to help. <laughs> okay. But again, none of us have done this before, so <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <clears throat> is everyone helping? Uh, to escape the potential of conversation, I would love to help. <laughs> <laughs> Pip can't do much to help. I think, like, he's just going to be, like, sort of treading along the river and... Looking uh, for rocks? Looking for rocks. <laughs> <laughs> and um, if any of those coins are, like, on the shoreline... I was about <clears throat> I was about to say yes there is uh, some uh, some of the scattered items yeah that uh, um that you had <clears throat> seen 
floating or or floating or sunk uh, into the water uh and, and now you know the origin in, in in some manner you're not sure why they're here uh you saw that the inside of the the witch's cave was covered in treasures but many of them were like some of them were very well taken care of and in the right place and some were destroyed and scattered and you imagine that uh, um what's currently in the water is what has been scattered maybe thrown out or maybe just misplaced um mm -hmm. although squeak is uh, um very set uh, on making sure that pip doesn't take any of it <laughs> even if does he's it out here does it seem to be like mostly silver is that the impression i'm getting like <laughs> um no not not necessarily okay all right pip won't take Go anything pip will, pip will take the advice of of squeak 500 platinum coins <laughs> you know there are some things worth pissing off a witch for <laughs> <laughs> okay So do we need to roll a raft check? Uh, I was about to say, everyone assists assists in whatever manner they can. Uh, I figured that like Brooke would help with carrying the largest number of of logs from the forest, since that's probably what he can do best. Um, yeah. And uh, as for the rest of you, how do you think you would be able to best contribute to this, uh, to, this to this job? That will just change the, the check you're, you're making. Guidance can't trip. <laughs> that too. I can cast Guidance too. I should do that. <laughs> That's like the uh, only thing I can think of for how Pontifex should do it, other than like, I don't know. The structural integrity is weak here in these joints. You should uh, tie some sort of knot. I'm not the sailor, but uh, you should seal this up. The buoyancy is all off. <laughs> He's like getting really scientific about it. <laughs> but he's yeah, just I mean, coaching. Talix really doesn't have any expertise lended to anything here, but you know, he'll just try to do some of the labor mm -hmm. tie things together. Uh I believe the people who can give uh, the, the most advice on building the actual like on the actual um when I try to actually make the raft happen, it would be Tekka himself. When I was younger, Dad helped me build a small fort in the forest. I believe he used a cross shape to tie the logs together. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. It's like a skeleton and everything else over it. Ooh. I'll try that. Uh, yeah, I know Pip, that they Pip lived to in make a... this float, the wood has to be uh, less dense in the water, and as the wood absorbs water, it becomes more dense. So we must uh, do something to prevent the wood's absorption of the water, because it might slowly sink over time if we do not. Pip lived on a in a fishing town. Uh, mm -hmm. Would he would he know something about like like how they would go about doing that? Yes. Um, <laughs> bless you. <laughs> uh, yes, Pip would have basically the same knowledge as Tekka. It's just that he hasn't had uh, um, enough no years to knowledge. actually. Yeah. Um, Young kids, both uh, both when Pip still had uh, his parents, uh, and also later as he was being uh, raised by someone else, uh, um, he would have learned uh, to to fish. Uh, although whether he would have done it, I, I imagine he wouldn't have. Uh, but like people would have tried to teach him, um, and some just basic like uh, boating skills. So uh, uh, he would have them, he would have them as well. I can help steer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Okay. So we can go. All right. 
Pontifex can do an arcana check um, for what he's typing in the chat right now. For like, um, just do to um, uh, can it do like a like, like you're an using magic or history uh, to well, like <clears throat> I, mean, I, I guess. You're you doing much to like get cover to make sure that like the, the logs will not soak up the water, yeah? That's a, that's a purpose uh, of the no, fire. I think we're going much more mundane of using things like oil and fire to create like a sort of varnish or lacquer over the wood to seal it from absorbing water. All right. I mean, if he can just like magically ward the wood from absorbing water, sure. But I don't have like a spell that specifically does that. Unless I can use mending to do that. <laughs> Uh, that is beyond the purposes of mending. Uh, I can I can repair a leaking wine skin. Why don't why not a leaking leaking <laughs> <wood>? leaky wood? <laughs> yeah. uh, mending okay. is supposed to join two objects together, like two halves. You know, something that had a rift oh, to go through it. It's not always two halves. It's just <laughs> yeah, it's just a, break a crack something. that's not oh, yeah. Like, yeah, break. Yeah, so big. Uh, but yeah, I mean, if there's like a magical way that we can go about this and just circumvent this whole science bit, great. But otherwise, I figure this is like yeah, a, can, like something he's researched before. My, oh yeah, leaky wine skin is right oil. there. Huh. Okay. Uh, so in Talix's case, it would be Arcana. No, no, I'm not. I'm not using magic. Talix is here. He'll give the oil to the professor, and he'll. Tie yeah, ropes think... and try to like help keep things along Tekka's design. Like the magic it's that the professor is the... doing is like to create like a reason. spark to like ignite the oil to create a, a varnish on the wood. Okay, so would Slide of Enda be okay for Talix for tying the ropes? Doing like sure. the manual part? Um, Pontifex would be an intelligence check, I suppose? Uh, sure. I'm thinking if this is something he's researched before, like. In, in detail, this is like investigation, what it's for. Maybe just like experimentation and see if this works. Uh, just go with a, a straight like intelligence history. check. A straight intelligence? Mm -hmm. No no proficiency or modifiers? Uh, no, I don't think so. Because th there is really no proficiency involved in here for, for Pontifex. He just said he doesn't... This is not something he would have done. Um, Brooke can do athletics for carrying uh, things, the heavy, the heavy things, and, I will, I will. uh, for tech, I feel like that would also be a, hmm, would it also be Could intelligence? Could history, right, recalling his moment, like, building the fort is that? I don't know. Uh, yeah, sure. You're going off of your memory. Go for, go with yeah. history. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor Brook. He's still charmed for like another half hour. Can I guide myself as well? I yeah, forgot. yeah. Alright. Pip and Squeak are moral support. <laughs> <clears throat> If you well, want, your, your moral support can give advantage to Brook. <laughs> yes. <Hey! laughs> okay. Move those Pip is, like, help, Pip is helping him carry with telekinesis. Just like, <laughs> if one part starts to sway. Let's like, go! <laughs> nice. <laughs> okay. Dennis, I will never tire of your dice rolls. <laughs> <laughs> Same. 15, 13, 27, 9. Uh, wait. Oh, yeah, yeah. You've had it before. Okay. It takes you a few hours to uh, put together this raft. Uh, but y'all believe um, that, assuming the river properly continues where eventually it is uh, on Pontifex's map, um, you believe that the time saved by traveling down the river 
uh, should ultimately be worth it. And you might even be able to shave perhaps one day off of your original um, of your uh, original uh, time for the journey. Um, it is a collection of logs. Uh, so by the time you push it into the river, um, it's big enough for all of you to sit on. Um, not the most comfortable. And if you ever were to hit like um, to hit a bit of a wave, you'd probably get splashed. Uh, but it, it is sturdy and it floats and doesn't seem to be falling apart. Uh, and it's able to hold the weight of uh, all of you. What? No juice bar? <laughs> <laughs> I just... You're the one with the brewing tools. And the ooplu. Is very true. The <laughs> rotting, stinky ooplu. I prefer the term fermenting. <laughs> it may be hideous now, but it will turn it into a beautiful specimen one day, hopefully. <laughs> Is that before or after we die from the stench? If we were to die from the stench, then its creation would never come to fruition. Therefore, logically, it must happen uh, <laughs> after, before. I got mixed up in my own words. <laughs> I will learn got... to make booze. <laughs> if you got actually nothing to do, though, Pontifex, you can check. Can you check out this vial and what it actually does? Maybe it helps with the stench. And it's a half moon vial with golden liquid from. Oh, yeah. Glimmer? From Glimmer, yeah. yes. Glimmer. Glimmer. Is this uh, magical? I assume so. All I could make out of is that it's evocation magic. Well, but I don't if, know what uh, anyone is. else has anything magical that they would like to be, uh, for lack of a better term, identified, uh, let me know. Throw it onto the pile. I will let you know in approximately 10 minutes each. <laughs> okay. Do you, think, do you think my tiny lady in the ball is magical? Uh, I would be beyond flabbergasted if it was not. Do you think this magic paperweight rock is magical? Uh, does it weigh down paper? I I mean, all rocks can do that. So what is uh, what is the thought process behind it possibly being Someone magical? Someone said it was magical. I believe it. Have been <laughs> it on the pile. <laughs> <laughs> Let's throw this rock on the pile with all the glass magic items. Oh god. Just dunk it. Uh, hold on, guys. Everyone is a robot for me. I'll be right back. <coughs> it's only oh, no. those two. Oh, wait, it's fixed. It's only those two. <laughs> oh, it is those two. What the? What? Oh, is it me? Yeah, it was Austin and Matt both simultaneously. Well, Dennis was fine. Oh. Uh, but uh, things are good. Okay. Okay. Use supremacy. Let's go. <laughs> um, all right. So you resume your journey this time on your makeshift raft. You let the river's current drag you southward, uh, rowing occasionally with your makeshift oars just to avoid hitting a rock or to uh, move away from the shore. Um... And as you're letting the current uh, drag you away from the ga from the cave, uh, Pontifex, that vague feeling of magic permeating the air, um, it fades away uh, right around the spot when the river, according to the map, is supposed to actually start. <laughs> what are you identifying? Uh, let's go in order. Um, let's do Brooks' uh, vial of. Maybe doesn't make my wine ooplu stink. <laughs> the glittering gold vial juice. Okay. Um, this one is rather rather simple. In fact, you kind of figure it out halfway through the casting of Identify because you know uh, this kind of magic personally. You can perform this kind of magic. This is a potion of light. Uh, whoever drinks it will um, gain the effect of the light cantrip. 
Ah, quaint. I like it. <laughs> Here you go, Brook. Uh, if you uh, drink this thing, you'll you'll uh, light up like a what is a holiday, like a not Christmas tree. <laughs> uh, actually, one relevant. Uh, today yeah. is the fifth of Amua, and in less than two weeks, uh, it will be um, the most important holiday of the year. Uh, which is called Deliverance. That's uh, the day when uh, um, when Vakanath returned to life. Oh. You will oh. light up like the smiles of children on the day of Deliverance. You know, it's weird. What? Back home, we'd be... Our great woody singing... overlord came back to life. What? <laughs> back home, we would have been singing Deliverance carols at least two months ago. <laughs> <laughs> we would have been singing... You know, and day of deliverance, the... trees and decorations all over. And I feel like day of deliverance right now. Hmm. <clears throat> but yeah, to solve your confusion, Pip, in, in the country we are from, there was this god, Vakanas, who is. was the, is, who <laughs> was supposedly <laughs> dead and revived on this day. Why? Why? Why do you say it like that? Supposedly. Well, because he isn't anymore, right? And to be fair, I don't believe any of you were around. I can remember it like it was yesterday, but I suppose a... I can at least attest to the truthfulness of there was a day when all of us, uh, the divine connection, suddenly lost it to an extent never witnessed the death of the tree myself, but uh, the things that I saw, the things that I felt, and the return of my magic seemed to be coincide with what was being said by the clerics. I have no reason to doubt them. You you lost your powers like people are losing theirs now? Eh, they have a different sort. Not like I lost them, but uh, the connection was weakened. It was... Uh, Instead of replenishing each day, it felt like a slow decline uh, over the span of, oh, what was that, uh, 125 years, roughly? A lot of people were uh, born, lived, and died in the years between the death of Akhenath and its rebirth. But uh, it came back. Uh, by the valorous sacrifice of Emil Zistor and uh, those of Nine and Talox's faith, our powers were restored. On the 17th day of the fourth month of the year 1105, known as the Day of Rebirth. I could talk for hours about this. I am a professor of theology, you see. <laughs> but uh, nowadays, I get the majority of my abilities from elsewhere, you could say. It was 226 years, by the way. It was what? That, uh, um... Oh yeah, 200... The time, uh, yeah, 1105. Vakanath was dead 1105. for... Mm, Vakanath was dead for over two centuries. You're right. He wouldn't mess that part up. Matt did. Oh, no, Matt no, he does. Math. Yeah, no, no, that's fine. I, um, I, I, I am proud of the fact that you guys remember so much. It's, it's, uh... Makes oh, me happy. I, don't. I have that massive timeline written down. <laughs> <laughs> of Pontifex's life. Anyways, I'm, uh, I'll get back to this. If you ever want to know more about the Vakanath or uh, history during the ages of awakening or the era of ashes or the beginning of the age of hope, I, I would love to regale you with tales endlessly until your ears bleed. Pip already stopped listening. <laughs> <clears throat> I know that. Pips Look, I'll get that to work. Pip's ears are already bleeding. Oh, and, uh, he's, gonna, he's gonna work on identifying the... Uh, let's do the rock next, actually. Mm -hmm. Break the order. Um, what did you just say, Jason? I was gonna... Well, yeah. Go ahead and do this. No, I'm chewing. Please say your thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I was just gonna say we should probably... 
We should probably think about taking shifts on uh, who's steering the boat. I'd like to maybe keep it going all day around. Anyone? Is anyone going to be able to sleep now? And row through the night? Mm. I least someone who can see in the dark. will need one hour's pause in the night. Only. All he needs is food for the night. Oh. 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 <laughs> All he needs a pee pee break. <laughs> yeah, why don't we do that before we go all lay down? <laughs> Everyone go to the bathroom before we leave. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't want to have to pull this boat over. <laughs> Especially since we were already, already on the boat. Yeah, yeah, you're well, already on the boat. Time to steer back to the end. <laughs> I mean, just, just go to the back. <laughs> the fish won't mind. <clears throat> just lean your ass over the edge. Good Ollie. Uh, Alright. Uh, Pontifex is 1795. What next? Uh, Pip's rock, the paperweight rock, the magical paperweight. Is it's it the one, one with all the colors? The, the on the back. Yeah, the one that came from the market with the 30 roll. Okay. Pontifex. Um, the opposite happens compared to when you were identifying the potion. Uh, with the potion, you got it right away, even before your spell was fully finished. With this rock, uh, at the end of your 11 minutes of casting it, you are left with uh, um, more questions than you had at the start. You can tell, and your spell picks up on the fact that there is some magic upon or uh, inside of this rock. But uh, it's... And generally you're able to tell not just the difference between schools of magic, but also the distinction between arcane and divine. To you, just it feels different. It's like it, it's like an entirely different kind of sound. It's like an entirely different kind of color. With this sense of yours that can, that can feel the magic in your hands, uh, you can distinguish between kinds of spells. But what you have in your hands has a kind of magic to it that you have never encountered before and you do not know how to categorize and your spell seems to fail to grasp the nature of it all you can tell is that there is a magic upon it that you have never encountered before oh well, okay, I was uh, doing this one because I was assuming it was a uh, less of a climactic ending than the old woman ball, but uh, I have been host. Hey, Pip, I have a question mm -hmm. for you about this rock. Well, what? what? What do I have to give you for it? What? <laughs> I will give you anything that you would like for this thing. Professor, you're the one that gave it to him. <laughs> oh, oh, so I what? Uh, uh, me, uh, how do I do this? This is very rude. Uh, so close to the day of deliverance. Uh. <laughs> oh my God. This stone, uh, by nature of a 30 on investigation, uh, is one of extreme peculiarity uh, to one of my... Uh, uh, proclivities. Uh, I try not to use all the big words to confuse it. I want this rock. <laughs> I want it very uh, badly. The the stone gently hovers to Pip's <laughs> hand. <laughs> <laughs> what would it take? No. <laughs> what do you mean, no? No. It's my rock. What if I got two, two rocks, twenty rocks, two thousand rocks? I don't understand. No, I don't think you understand. No, you don't understand. This no, rock is special. Understand. You it can't just replace this rock with, with a hundred rocks. <laughs> I think they're just bickering. <laughs> 
and it just goes back and forth. If it, if it gets super heated, Pip like <laughs> tries to eat him off the ground. <laughs> 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 if you, if you, you go for that rock. <laughs> No, I don't think he's gonna try to forcibly take it from you. <laughs> he's trying to negotiate v vigorously. So what did you find out there, Professor? <laughs> that is the thing. I have found out Bumpkiss. <laughs> it is nothing like I have ever seen before. My magics are unable to even tell what it is. This could be arcane, this could be divine, this could be neither, this could be... Uh, any of the schools or none of them. This could be a new one altogether, and I have no idea what it does. Yeah, well, maybe you don't know because this rock is older than you, and that's saying something. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Generally speaking, the majority of rocks are significantly older than me, but uh, <laughs> I, you're, you're not a geologist. I'm not giving a geology lecture, but uh, <laughs> it is not a humor there. <laughs> The, the rock is inconsequential. The magic upon it is the fascination I am having. I have spent, as you have so aptly put, a uh, rock's life of work into these uh, crafts, and I I don't understand shit about these things. I will delve into the mysteries of this rock. Oh! You are to pursue it academically. Yeah. I will... I will academically... Uncover its secrets. Uh, this is an even greater reward than anticipated. I'd love to see you bloom into an aspiring arcane theologist. This is fantastic. <laughs> Pip starts with licking it. What does it <laughs> taste like? It's a good trial <laughs> to perform. Uh, constitution saving throw. The 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 rock has like this uh, this normal faint rock taste to it, uh, it except uh, uh, for the part where all these circles are painted on it and then you taste the paint which is just this unpleasant uh, uh, natural kind of kind of uh, taste that uh, very much seems like you should not be licking hmm. it means I'm close to something <laughs> you know it could be just like a magical jawbreaker <laughs> you want to try it? If you would allow me to, I would love to. <laughs> He's holding his hand out. <laughs> no, this, uh, no, if you were to pursue this, this is an even greater reward than the rock itself. I simply do not believe you were interested in such things, but I would never... Never dare to hamper your academic pursuits. Pip places it in his pouch. <laughs> what sort of magic would you put on a rock? I would love to hear your weekly reports of your findings. <laughs> You're talking a lot of shit for someone on the edge. Oh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm <laughs> drop kicking position. <laughs> anyway, I'll stop giving you a hard time. Just uh, you know, research the rock if you're going to do that, or if not, uh, let me do it. Anyway, <laughs> we'll identify the next thing. Okay. Uh, what is the next thing? The Snow old lady orb. The lady orb? The, 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 the pie baker. <laughs> the snow globe. Oh. Uh, you guys haven't already done that before? No. Oh, nope. okay. Uh, I used detect magic on it when we got right. it, but I didn't have the pearl at the time. And then he tortured oh, that's true. the woman. <laughs> yeah, and then I tormented her by flashing her, right. my cantrips and, and all kinds of stuff. That's just right. to see if, if the outside world affected the inside world, and it does. <laughs> okay. It's a much um, better trial than licking it. Another dub for science. <laughs> <laughs> Pontifex would be able to detect two kinds of magic upon the orb. Um, he's able to tell that the kind of magic on this orb is uh, uh, off, is from Lidaria. Um, mm -hmm. 
And uh, the schools of magic are transmutation, which uh, really just permeates the entire thing. And then just like this, this faint, uh, this faint uh, feeling um, of an additional conjuration effect that is uh, much minor, uh, much more, much smaller compared to the other. I thought that's what I got from the detect magic before. Okay, is that it? Uh, is it? Is that all I get from the identify is just the schools of magic? Oh, that! No, 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 that's right, that's, that's, not, how, that's, that's not how identify works. Uh, right, right, right. Yes, yeah, so sorry, I was, I was stuck on the stone. I, got I was stuck on the ago. stone from earlier. Yeah, 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 you're right. Uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, let me, no, let me, let me bring, let me bring the thing. Um, okay, here it is. Um, okay, yeah, yeah. Um, so. The... The magic that, it, that, is, that um, makes this orb has taken something from the real world and made it far smaller and self-contained. Um, what is within the orb, you're able to tell from, uh, from your spell, um, is real. Uh, this used to be a fully like, normal-sized woman, and so was the house, so was the little hill. Um, this feels more like a, a in terms of uh, how um, this, this this magic is affecting this sphere, it feels more like a curse um, than like a proper set of spells. Um, mm. Mm, yep, that's that. That would be the entirety of it. So you know that. Uh, um, what's inside the sphere used to be fully sized and it's now being compressed into a little, a little orb that is self-sufficient and it's made it to like so that the person inside can survive and uh, it's a it, this is definitively a curse and not uh, an enchantment per se um, the only difference uh, mainly being that this has been done against the person's will it feels like okay. a, 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 a trap. Uh, this one is more sad. I almost wish I hadn't have done this. Um, yeah, this confirms the suspicions, Pip. This uh, woman was real, is real. Uh, this is not an image. This is not a, a fabrication or any kind of summoning. Uh, this was an unfortunate person who was caught in some sort of magical affliction against their will and has been since miniaturized and compressed into this sphere. Oh no! And thankfully it is self-sufficient, so she shall want for nothing. A risk of death is extremely unlikely, but... Can we get her out? What if we, yeah, what if we break it? I don't think that breaking it is exactly the best way to do it, but... How do we some, get her out? There's hey, magical ways hey. to do this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Inside it it starts snowing. Uh, people have seen this when handling the the, the snow globe. Uh, even when shaking it, even if holding it upside down, it seems like the gravity within it is entirely unaffected except for the snow. Um, so even if he were to hold it upside down, the woman wouldn't like fall uh, to the to the top of the glass. Um, it just makes the snow go back to the top and then fall back down. Um, with the snow falling again inside of the of the globe, uh, people would see that a woman comes to uh, one of the windows and looks outside and seems to see you and waves. How do we get you out? How do we get you out? She watches you for a few seconds until eventually she just goes back inside her home. Mm. I'd love to see you work the problem on your own. I am almost reluctant to give you the answer. If we get her out, then she might be able to help with the rock. Very true. <laughs> so how would you propose that we do that? 
I will give you the answer that breaking it is not the way. I... Uh... I don't know. But I will let you chew on that and work it out over time as long... Uh, along with the rock problem. I am excited to see what you come up with. I have a headache. Uh, if you know a way to remove the curse, I think we should do that right away, Professor. I perhaps know a way or two, but not that I can do at the moment. It uh, would require additional study over a lengthy amount of time. One could say two levels? <laughs> I'll do it faster. Give me one. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get you out, little lady. <laughs> as soon as we get to the next milestone. <laughs> this is your moment. Of you knowledge. <laughs> of, of connection to not a bad thing. Just by pure genius. Nothing to do with patrons. <laughs> Yes, good. Hey, work at it. I, I, I await your answer. Just right. keep in mind that there is a chance that the woman wants to stay in that snow globe. Maybe uh, she wished for it. I yeah. can confirm to an extent it is <laughs> unlikely. Uh, this seems to have been unwilling. Oh. Uh, like a trap that was sprung. Oh. Of course, you know, this could have been something set by her and then purposefully <laughs> triggered by her, but that just seems like a roundabout way to do things. <laughs> Every... you, rather than closing a door, you set up a mechanism that will close the door for you when you enter the door. It is a little silly, like an automatic door, you could say. Every woman you come Idiotic. across who has an issue has actually done it to herself. <laughs> that will be the theme from now on. <laughs> That's the story. <laughs> Are you given? <sighs> Anyways, I believe that is everything. What is are it you doing? Productive thirty-five minutes. Um, Who's been steering this whole time? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Tekka has been steering the raft. I uh, I picture it to be in Tekka with oh his. Uh, Tekka staff. Jesus. <laughs> Shovel stuff. Yeah, Tegas using his core yeah. staff. Yeah. Does he have an ore attachment? He has the shovel. Yeah, the shovel can be yep. an ore. Oh, man. oh, I was thinking like John Rambo. You're just like using the core staff to like move us along the floor. Is in the river like really shallow? Uh, it's a uh, um reasonably so. Most of it, the got... brook would be able to touch the ground. Um, I had gotten a couple of big sticks for that reason, if you remember from the last mm -hmm. session. If we were able to, like, trudge along the... Yeah. Yeah, along it, like, edges. Because you don't have to actually move it forward. All you have to do is make sure you don't get too close to the, to the, um, yeah. to the edges. So, you know, use the stick um, to mm. push away from a shore if you get too yeah. close to it. It, it does yeah. require constant monitoring. Like, somebody needs to be doing this at all times. Uh, right. And it helps if you have a person on each side. Because uh, shuffling around this kind of smallish raft is, uh, is a pain. Uh, but besides that, yeah, you're just um, you're just letting the current take you. Every once in a while, you take breaks. Um, and uh, speaking of breaks, I do want to know: Are you planning on continuing during the night? Telex wants to. Sec, I was just about to bring this up, so um, I I will guide this raft in the night. So I will take my rest now. All right, I'm happy to take over for you. Um, what kind of trees did we chop down? Were they conifers or? Probably they would be conifers because those have lighter wood, right? It would be easier. Yeah, I was about to ask what would be the most, uh, the best uh, kind Lighter of Lighter and more that, pliable, uh... right? Then sure, yeah. It... Or willow or something? We are in like open plains where forests are kind of sparse. Um, and I believe the conifers are fine for the current biome. Aren't like oaks the, the main kind of tree on like plains and savannas? 
It's like, you know, all the different types of oak trees. Uh, I believe in savannas, it's acacia. Uh, plains, there are oaks that grow apples. <laughs> and occasional birch trees. But yeah, uh, Tekka would have brought a few branches. And uh, when he lies down, he'd be like puts the branches above him and his backpack to cover them from the splashes that might happen during the journey. Mm. Oh god, I'm going down a rabbit hole of looking at what trees grow <laughs> yeah. where. Uh, this is not gonna, we don't need to me decide anyway. on the tree type <coughs> right now. You it's took nice. what you had available. Um, yeah. <clears throat> something you will have to do uh, is that every, every once in a while when you do stop the boat, uh, um, some repairs need to be done, and every once in a while you'd have to, like, <clears throat> get in more wood or get some uh, some repairs if you, if you end up bumping uh, into any obstacle. Uh, it just requires, like, maintenance every once in a while. Uh, it's it's fine, it's holding up, uh, but, like, on for your first day, that's kind of what you're doing. You're just stopping every, every two hours. Um... Taking 30 minute breaks, going over any any damage, making sure it's not like soaking up water and the ropes are holding up just fine. <clears throat> uh, your ropes weren't really made to to be in water for too long. And you have a feeling that by the by the time you get to the end of the river, um, you probably will not be able to use these ropes anymore. Yeah. Oh, right. I'm also on the tree the rabbit room. hole, and if these are oaks. It is uh, extremely likely that Pontifex predates every single tree in this area. <laughs> <laughs> it's like under perfect conditions, the longest living type of oak tree, which is the white oak, can live to be close to 300 or slightly over. Mm. Yeah. And that's yeah, in the, perfect the white conditions. Oak is, uh, like what's being taken care us. of. We've got some old oaks. <laughs> An average oak lives about 150 years. It would have overall. Uh, it would have taken their ancestors. It, it would have taken overall two, um, two coils of rope, um, just from all the cutting and knotting them. Uh, that uh, I just need two of you to remove from your from your backpack. A coil being fifty feet. Uh, fifty feet, yeah. All right, I'll, I'll tell us to remove one. Yeah, take also remove one. All right. Okay. And Tech is sleeping through the afternoon and plans to stay up during the night, right? Correct. Okay. Uh, that works with me? All of you are good with this? Mm hmm. Yeah. Okay. Where did I put this? Uh, here. Okay. Um, Tekka. Mm -hmm. You, um, you are woken up uh, as the sun is has just set, and uh, uh, you will work on keeping the raft uh, going uh, during the night. <clears throat> the rest of you, are you still planning on like having one person awake every every, every two hours? Probably, because I still have your order. Well, if he's <laughs> Yeah, we might do, like, longer shifts. Like... That makes sense, yeah. If he slept through the afternoon, maybe... Maybe we have two people up through the night and two people... Right, like, that's what I'm saying. Like, Tekka stays up the entire night, so if the four of you still take your shifts in the order you had before, which was Pip, Brook, Talix, and Pontifex, um, each of you take a shift alongside Tekka. Mm, it would so make that Tekka's not alone. I see what you're okay. saying. Okay, yeah, we could do that. Sure, let, let's just go with that for now. Not sure how much help I would be, but... Uh, sure. Well, I mean, uh, it is fine. It's, it's, it's minor. I just wanted to know who was awake uh, um, by the time it starts raining. So it would be Pontifex and Tekka. It's right towards uh, the end of the night. Uh, uh, as the sun sh should rise uh, in just over an hour and a half or so, but uh, you begin to feel just the, the droplets of rain uh, fall over you. 
and you kind of move over to make sure that the the others who are currently sleeping, the other uh, Talix, Pip, and Brook, uh, have something to protect them from the rain. But um, their final part of the rest is just um, made less comfortable uh, by by the bad weather. It's just Pontifex and Tekka that are awake. Mm -hmm. I uh, I don't think Talix would be able to sleep while being rained on. In other case, Pontifex really is taking it. off his whole cloak and is, like, throwing it over Pip. <laughs> Aww. That is my little scholar. <laughs> <laughs> he said that his brain hurt. It uh, must have been very exhausting of an exercise for him. He deserves all of the rest. And uh, this feels good on this scale. I could just take the rock right now. He's <laughs> <laughs> like sleeping on it. Just, I could just drown yeah. him in the moment. <laughs> uh, if uh, <laughs> if Talek <laughs> struggles, <blame> <laughs> if Talek struggles to sleep while it rains, so, um, I mean, it would be helpful to know. Yeah. Yeah, like, it, it, if he wakes up, you know, that, that counts as his long rest not ending. But uh, during the morning, uh, the weather, like, comes and goes. Um, as as Tekka keeps the, the raft going down the river, um, there is, like, these moments of reprise. Uh, moments where it, it's dry and you can kind of catch up on, like, half an hour of sleep. And then you're woken up by it again. And it's... It's definitely unpleasant, uh, but if you don't want oh. to stop the raft, you could get your long rest. It would just like happen around noon, and it kind of ruins the rest of your day too. It just doesn't feel good. Pontifex feels like he is at home. In fact, whenever it starts raining and the talus wakes up, he's like, "Great!" and he's gonna sleep like a baby. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, rain is exactly what it makes like. For better, for better weather, uh, he's not going to try to sleep in the rain. If... Mm -hmm. So yeah, he'll just wait up and try to catch up later. I can't see anything, anyways. <sighs> okay. Uh, this is your fourth day of travel. It's the sixth of Amua. And it's around the middle of the afternoon when the, pr the first person to see this will be Tekka. Um, he spots something further down the river uh, on the left uh, eastern edge. Um, it's a small wagon. And as your raft gets a little bit closer, uh, the rest of you also can spot it. And you'll see that it's... Uh, it's attached to an animal that looks like like a large red elk with goat horns and a fluffy <gasps> mane around the neck. And it has like surprisingly short and stubby legs. Uh, kneeling near the water, filling up his water skin, is a Yavelsi. Uh, he's an exceptionally tall man with a spiral box and curly hair, all a deep shade of mahogany, just like his skin. And not only is he tall, but also he, um, you see when he, when he, um, when he stands up, you can see that he walks on the tip of his bare feet. And, uh, um, as you get closer, you see that he is, uh, like almost all the way up to Brooks's, uh, to Brooks' height. Um, he's wearing a surprising, Wait. hmm? Sorry, he's, he's Brooks size, but with stubby legs? The stubby legs oh, are on the yeah. animal. Oh, the animal. Okay, I thought of Tim. I was like, man, this guy's like 80% torso. <laughs> okay, I was going to real like cat dog kind of visual. Never mind. Sorry. Uh, uh, where was I? Okay. He, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that's fine. He, I wasn't clear. Uh, he's wearing surpri a surprising number of heavy pelts. Uh, they're all mainly the these red and orange and yellow colors. And despite looking uh, visibly cold, um, he does smile widely when he sees your raft approaching, almost as if he just spotted an old friend, and he frantically gestures at you. Yeah, uh, Tekka will slow, try to slow down the raft and head towards the side. Roll up the window and keep... <laughs> 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 yeah, your raft just, 
gently um, approaches the uh, the edge of the river until um, you are you are parked <laughs> uh, next to the cart, and oh. uh, the oh, Avels is. Just... <laughs> yeah, you make sure everyone is like up and sees this. Um, this is a moment when it's still, uh, it is currently raining just very faintly. Uh, once Pontifex sees the guy, he's gonna, like, I guess, frantically yank the cloak off of Pip and cover his head. <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> oh, Professor, you even had a chance to meet one of these people yet, have you? Uh, sorry, who? What? Uh, the Avalsi. Oh, it's always a treat to meet them. Uh, oh. We can do some trading, we can, uh, okay, yes. As the Yavel suggests for you to come to, to come onto the, 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 the shore off the raft, um, he points at his wagon, he says, Ire, Ire, set caddy! Uh, translator? Uh, I... Unfortunately, uh, I don't think I learned that one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, nobody does. No, it's not. <laughs> oh, and it's a Ladarian language, so I can't even comprehend it. Uh huh. Yep. And this is going to be exhilarating. <laughs> All right. It's okay. Uh, just uh, I can struggle my way through it. It's okay. I might be able to speak one of their languages. <laughs> and Pip looks down at the. Is that's an elk? Sort of creature? Uh, the, oh. the, 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 the word elk would be the closest one to describe it, yeah? It's... Like a corgi elk. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, you would know that this kind of creature is called a, ra a Rakazvitur. It's spelled oh. like this. Uh, but Ladarians uh, who don't, uh, sorry, Plurnans who don't know what they're called, but see them, they will just tend to call them rock elks. Okay. Uh, when Pip has seen Yavelsi before, did they travel with yes. creatures like these? Yep. Oh. So Pip <laughs> has seen them before many times. So uh, Pip will will uh, very quickly and excitedly get off the raft, rave at the, or wave at the, not rave, wave at the <laughs> Yvelsi, and uh, look down at the uh, uh, Rakasvitur and say, uh, which means, Hi, my name's Pip. These are my friends. How are you today? Uh, the the Rakaz tour seems uh, uh, pretty excited to be speaking with you, and, and you see it just uh, um, slam a, a hoof on the ground, and then another sort of like almost tip tapping, um, and uh, and says, "I am doing great. Have you tasted this water? You should. It's delicious." Pip leans down and tastes it. And cups cups some in his hands and takes a sip. It's clear river water. Nice and refreshing. <laughs> it always weirds me out when he does this. Also making a lot of very like physical gestures as well. Uh like stamping his foot and like mm. uh Slapping different parts of his body, <laughs> Remind me to making very shoes. weird faces with his uh, with yeah. his like mouth. <laughs> and uh, the the Avelsi <laughs> points at Pip and and like starts laughing and uh, uh, just says things that that none of you understand. Uh, okay, no well, idea I... what he might be on about, but he seems to be having a, uh, he seems to be having a great time. Talos is gonna try hailing him in Itarian and see if it works. Uh, hello, do you speak the uh, Itarian language? Um, he, he, he looks at you and smiles widely and says, Ire, Ire! He didn't seem to get it. Hmm. 
Right. Um, and then, like, he, he pauses and he, like, scrambles in, in his pockets. And it takes him, like, a whole minute to find what he's looking for. And he pulls out a piece of parchment and he points at it. And he looks at it very intently. And then he looks up at, back at Talix and says, Hello. <laughs> Hello. And then uh, he points frantically at this wagon. And he looks at, again at the parchment and then says, Bye. <laughs> uh, goodbye, I suppose. No, uh, <laughs> it's a fast interaction. <laughs> it's like speed dating for merchants. They, they tried all sorts of interesting things. Let's let's go. I go look at the wagon. Oh, buyers in purchase. <laughs> I see. I understand now. <laughs> I have to go through a couple of layers. It is fine. Just uh, stay away from the spices. <clears throat> um, Are these spices useful for brewing? Or blue wine? <laughs> uh, let's uh, see. So inside, uh, you see an assortment of things. Uh, mainly, you see equipment for traveling on the road. There's uh, there's uh, tents, bedrolls, water skins, whistles, backpacks, pouches, grappling grappling hooks, uh, crowbars, climber kits, and uh, blankets. Uh, and curiously, half of it seems to be of Plurnan make. While the rest are made of materials you, you don't uh, recognize right away. Um, actually, some of it do. Uh, it's uh, a portion of the things in there that are not of Plurnan make. Uh, they look like the, the textiles that uh, uh, the Atarophili had. Uh, the things that their tents and their clothes were made of. Uh, as that sort of like very shimmering, almost metallic-like material. Um, he also sells Lidarian jewelry. Uh, primarily built out of metals that are rust-colored, but shiny. Um, and then you recognize uh, some fruits that are local to, uh, to, to the, the peninsula, including Uplus. And uh, um, some closed jars with, uh, with uh, powders in them. And a few that look like uh, jam. And lastly, a container of paste that is just like Talix's bug repellent. You can actually smell that one even if it's closed. Okay, Talix is just gonna start stacking things up on his arms. Uh, I suppose that uh, we need a restock on rope. Uh, and uh, Opus. <clears throat> Go ahead. Mm -mm -mm. There are ropes as well. Uh, Pontifex is looking. Is there any kind of like wax or something like that, or like polish? Um... Even just like candle wax would be fine. Mm -hmm. There are candles. Perfect. So there, there is a tent. So okay, we saw some material that resembled the. Itarophili tents. Is there mm -hmm. actually a tent among them? Yes. Yeah, Talix wants to give... Okay, I'll make a list. Rope, tent, candles. Oh, well, I can't do multiple lines. <laughs> I'll just write I, it on a card. As quickly as Pip ran into the tent, or the, the, the wagon, he quickly runs out again and runs over back to the raft and says... Brooke, Tekka, come on! Uh, yeah, Tekka's like dragging the raft onto land, so it's not just going down. So he doesn't the... drift off, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I have to draw this I... every time, just pretend yeah. it's on land now. <laughs> I emerge. Pip, have you found something that intrigues you? Uh, yeah. Have you met one of these these animals before? I have seen them. Yes. They're a lot like dogs, but I think they're cuter. They seem friendly to enjoy life. Huh? Huh? 
<laughs> so I was looking if I had like a raft uh, somewhere, but I don't <laughs> seem to. Like a, an actual item. Come on, come on. Let, let's see what they've got. Let's. I might find another petrified mouse. Um. Are you you're all making uh, lists? Uh, do you want me to hand this to you or just read it out? Um, read it out for me. Okay. I would like a tent and blanket of a terrafilly make. A rope about a backpack full of ooplus. The jar of insect salve. Some kind of sweet jam and lamp oil if they have it. I'm getting lamp oil and rope. They have bombs? <laughs> <laughs> Knives, ropes, I would like bombs. a hand grenade. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, they do they do have lamp oil. He he does have it. Okay. Uh so you you pile up uh, um <clears throat> you pile up your things uh, like on a uh, he has a little blanket to just sit out uh, sit out on the ground um and you pile them up uh, and uh, um he 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 nods and smiles as you're putting more and more things there and then at the end uh he asks um uh, Dail etniari I Okay so Talix has probably traded with these people before. Do mm -hmm. they normally? How do the? How does this interaction normally go? Do they? They like worthless junk. <laughs> what? Pip says out loud. <laughs> like I guess we can do that. We can play the foreign language card too. <laughs> Just talk <laughs> mad shit to this person's <laughs> face. <laughs> these are all very useful things. Doesn't have any rocks. Ah. Uh, Talix is just going to. Uh, he's going to get out. Uh, how much? Hang on, let me let me look at something real quick. Let me look at how much this normally costs. Are we doing like separate shopping carts per se, or are we just going to pile everything up? Um, however you prefer. Yeah, I don't think Pontifex knows how to deal with this person. He's never even met one of these things before, so I think he's just gonna try to put the things he's interested in, which is uh, one candle. Uh, and you said there's just like jars, like empty jars. Um, there are no empty ones; they're all full. Some of them oh. have powders inside, and some of them have like uh, uh, jelly-like things. Uh, Talix got one, and he's, he 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 said it's gem. Some of those spices can ruin your day, be careful. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I'm more interested in the jar, but uh, are any of these spices okay? Is it... uh, some people like them. Oh, okay. they like them. Well, I mean, sure. And he'll, he'll grab one of the jars with random spice, and I think it was pick like mm -hmm. a random one and like look at Talix for approval. It's bright yellow. Um, it, it almost feels like saffron. Um, and oh. Talix would know that this is exceptionally spicy. Talix is just going to give you a shrug. Perfect. Oh. You, you said yeah, yellow? You like, like turmeric yellow? Yeah, it's, it's a very intense color. This refreshing, it looks like a citrus of some sort. It's perhaps uh, sweet and fragrant. I'm looking forward to this. <laughs> Might have a spoonful. Uh, be careful. Okay, in the so. Pursuit of science. <laughs> one jar of uh, yellow powder, one candle, anything okay. else? Uh, that's it for Pontifex. Okay. Does Brooke uh, want anything? <clears throat> Not anything I can think of right now. Okay, so what about what about Pip? Pip is specifically looking for any of like the more unique or, or weird things he might have here. 
I think the thing... So there are no rocks. Uh, let's start with that. <laughs> uh, Why am I even here? <laughs> <laughs> he, he, <laughs> um, the Yevelsi Pip got to interact with uh, after the first time when they learned uh, what Pip wanted. They regularly showed up with uh, with uh, um, oh. with rocks to offer. Like a couple of them, you got them from from them, and you got the petrified rat from them. Um, but uh, this is not a Yavelsi I've met previously. He doesn't seem to know <laughs> to stock up on rocks. Um, but uh, the thing that would probably catch Pip's attention uh, would be a small. Uh, it's a small metal pendant. It's it seems to be it's made of that uh, uh, brownish colored metal that uh, a lot of things here are made of, um, and it is uh, it's visibly in the shape of a red beak. Hmm. I I'll I'll, I'll take that and, and and Pip will hold that up, and and uh, uh, hold it up in front of the E of Elsie. He nods. And he says, learn. I take out my slingshot. Pip holds it out. Pick up. Hmm? Is this a stick up? <laughs> <laughs> what? What? No, it's a trade. <laughs> um, the Avelsi points at, points at it and then points at uh, the red beak shaped pendant and at the items that Pontifex just took. Perfect. He will he, he will take it from you, let to keep the pendant, and he will like shove the jar and the candle into Pontifex's arms. He's, he's shoving the candle into Pontifex's arms? Yeah, because you put them together with, like, Talix's things. Hmm. Uh, they appear to be paid for. Oh. Oh, just like that? Your debt has been paid, my friend. <laughs> okay. It okay. puts the red beak jewelry <laughs> around his neck. It's just a pendant. He doesn't have like the the necklace. Never mind. He ties it in his hair. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um. Does Tekka want to buy anything? Um. What is the name of the Plurinan currency we've been using? Is there a name? Of the Plurinan currency? Yeah. Like we've mostly been in settlements, right? So it's most. It hasn't um, been the currency in Plurin, I'd imagine. Yeah, it is. Uh, that is what we have been calling gold and silver and uh, and copper okay. and platinum. Plurin and shillings. Yeah, I just wasn't sure if they had a, like a word for like a coin or anything. Okay. Um, so Tekka will hold up uh, like in the palm of his hand five gold uh, to the MLC and just measure his reaction. You have five gold in your hand, mm -hmm. but you haven't taken anything from the cart? No. Okay. Um, then you have LC points at it and points at the wagon. Hmm. Tekka, like, points with an open hand back to him. Uh, he starts laughing. Yeah, if there's no other reaction, uh, you have, uh, Tekka will just point to the bundles of rope. Um, he picks up uh, one full, you know, 50 foot uh, uh, thing of rope and like holds it out and points at your five, five gold coins in your hand. Tekka will nod and hold it forward. Okay. He will take them and just slide them into a little pouch. Uh, so all that's left is Talix's payment. 
Uh, yeah. Wait, did Tekka just pay five gold for one coil of rope? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, well, Talos is just going to point to her. Oh, yeah, he's just going to like, hold up all the stuff he's taken and take out a couple gold pieces and gauge the reaction. Um, he, the Yavelsi points uh, at the things that are piled up on the blanket, all the, all the items that Talix took, and then, uh, uh, shakes his head. Hmm. Rekes, Rekeska! Talix just going to start, um... He's going to take out his purse and just start putting down coins until the reaction changes, I guess. Pip sees this and then takes a knife and then cuts off one of his dreads and puts it on the table next to the the, the coins that Talix had already put down. Uh, so Talix has put down a pa a about 10 gold pieces at this point, and Pip puts down a, um, a, a, a lock of hair. Is it, does it have anything attached to it? Uh, this one would have like a, a a bead on it, like a wooden bead. Okay. Uh, when Pink Pip, in color. When Pip when Pip does that, um, the the Yavelsi nods and pushes, uh, picks up some of the gold coins and returns them back to Talix, uh, so that the the total price amounts to uh, eight gold pieces and a lock of air. Alright. Uh Tox will just not uh, thank you, Pip. Though I'm not completely sure what you just did. Confused does not begin to describe the feeling. And the uh, Yvelsi picks up the, the gold and the lock of hair, uh, puts the gold in a pouch and a lock of hair um in a little compartment that's like, um, the, he lifts up uh, the top uh, of the seat, um, and like there is, a, there is a sort of like a chest on the inside and puts a lock of air in there and then closes it. Then he looks at the, uh, the parchment that he, that he had his entire time, he, he goes through, through the list with his uh, finger and he taps on a word and says, Bye! <laughs> Goodbye. Bye. Thank you. Wait, is it the, the other bye this time? <laughs> Tell us it? Just kind of like lean up and try to read what he's reading off of. <laughs> um, yeah, sure. Uh, Tag take takes a look at the parchment. Uh, roll a perception check. As uh, the uh, Valsi, like a. Uh, 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 when he notices that Talix is like sort of like leaning over, um, he he pulls it up against his chest uh, to to hide uh, uh, what's on it, uh, and Talix oh. is able for a moment to see that it's covered his <laughs> blank. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of wish I had done that. <laughs> uh, no, but the the writing, like the letters on it, are not a script that Talix has ever seen before. Uh, it's com Never complete. Seen. Yeah, it's complete nonsense to him. Okay. <sighs> I would like a chance to meet more of these people, but uh, never a good opportunity. Well. Uh, the Yavasi goes back to the river, finishes uh, filling up his water skin, and then he looks like he's making preparations to, to leave. He's just um, putting, uh, uh, reattaching uh, the Rakasvitur to the, to the wagon, 
Um, Pip, you have learned that um, the name of the Rakazvi tour is Tokeke. Uh, he introduced Tokeke. himself to you. Oh. Okay. Pip says goodbye to Tokeke, and and if 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 uh, he mm -hmm. if he allows them, then Pip would give him some pats before he gets back on the raft. Tokeke enjoys having his uh, mane brushed. Then Pip will do that. And he sort of like pushes uh, the pushes his head into Pip's chest. Take good care of yourself out there. It's a dangerous world. And it is very cold. But I'll be oh. fine. Is it... Is it that cold right now? Oh, no. Man. No, it's spring. He's totally scamming you into buying a blanket. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you, you, you see that the... Um, the Yavelsi man is, is is wearing a lot of pelts on him, um, ah. and even if it's raining a little bit, and you know it's, it it feels colder, uh, it's still early spring. Like it's it's um, you guys are dressed well enough that it, the cold doesn't bother you, uh, but he's dressed more like full on winter, uh, two feet of snow kind of kind of. Uh, yeah. uh, they're used to warmer weather, it would seem. And the the um, the Rikazu tour himself is just has kind of a uh, thicker, uh, thick enough fur to to suggest, yeah, um, not not so thick. Sorry, very very thin. It's only the mane that is longer. Uh, hope, hopefully, it warms up soon. Uh, all right, that's that's everything, yeah. I believe so. Mm. Okay. Uh, you're ready to resume your journey on your little raft. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. Uh, is Tekka still going to sleep through the like late afternoon, uh, uh, mid to late afternoon and early evening and stay up during the night? I think so. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Okay. Uh, Talix is going to go ahead and start getting into the Uflus, if anyone else wants some. They yeah, are... Have you will yeah. definitely sure. Yeah, have fun. They definitely. are fresh. Not at all rotting. <laughs> He's, uh, I almost... I almost forgot what a new Uplu was supposed to look like. <laughs> <laughs> I do think that whenever like Pontifex gets the Uplu or or like a slice of it or something, um, if not, he's gonna slice it up with his little paring knife, and uh, I think he's actually gonna sprinkle some of this spice on one of the slices to try it. Oh no! <laughs> okay. Uh, I will need uh, a Constitution saving throw from Pontifex <laughs> at disadvantage. <laughs> yeah. Double nat 20, let's do it. Double nat 1. Seven. Okay. Um, at first, you only taste the, uh, the ublu. Uh, first couple of seconds go by and you're not entirely sure if uh, this uh, this powder that you put on it um, has anything to Alex, it. Alex, I just, feel like you may have been exaggerating this whole thing the whole like, time. <laughs> surprisingly uh, vaguely tart. Um, but then like a moment later it, it hits you. Um, it, it's it's like fire. Uh, you just... Uh, you, you are on a raft, uh, and all you can do, like, the, just your body just moves uh, instantly, and you're like, uh, a moment later, you're on uh, on the edge of the raft with your head into the river's water, um, just trying to put out that, that feeling in your mouth. 
Ah, uh, it's pretty bad. <laughs> I guess spot effects can hold his head underwater while we're moving for a while. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he might actually stay there for a while. He didn't have to come uh, out. Yeah, do the rest of it. Catch some fish, we got uh, <laughs> some can hear you. His head's underwater. <laughs> do the rest of it. It's a little um, scary to see somebody with their head underwater for that long. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm about 80% sure he can breathe. <laughs> Just gonna tap him on the back real quick. <laughs> they go pull out of the water. Yes! What? Uh, <laughs> you okay there? No! And it, <laughs> it jams his head back underwater. Pip uses this opportunity to pull out the magic rock. <laughs> 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 All right, Pip's going to try something, okay? Oh, okay. He had an epiphany. Okay. All right. He looks at the stone, and and he looks at the bottom of it. You said there were like these, these, these painted on concentric rings or, mm -hmm. or something like that. Yeah, multiple just colors, uh, multiple circles into a, one another. Okay. Uh, Pip sort of runs his hands Wait. along those rings and what? Roll a history check. Did I do something wrong? Okay. <laughs> I'm so scared. Okay. History. I'm good at that. Okay. Um, you had a feeling um, yesterday when you showed the, the rock to Pontifex, uh, uh, like something sort of like tugging at the back of your mind, but you weren't really sure about it. Uh, um, but, like, now that you look at it, you're certain that compared to yesterday, and now you think even compared to when you bought it, uh, um, the actual colors of those circles have shifted. It's no uh. longer the same, uh, the same uh, colors in the same order. Huh. Are they... So the colors are different, but the... Sh have the shapes changed? The shapes have not oh. changed, and the position hasn't changed either. Interesting. Pip notices this and, and just sort of, like, runs his fingers along the ring and, and shakes it a little bit, sees if the colors change at all. Shaking the pebble doesn't seem to be changing the colors. Okay. And then Pip is going to try and cast magic stone on it. Just see if that does anything. Mm. I'm reading the spell. Okay. Uh, Pip can tell that the spell did not take hold. Um, you can normally sense like the <clears throat> the the uh, the flow of magic uh, when he casts a, a spell. Uh, he can tell if something that he just cast, uh, if he changed the, the the appearance and just the, the the general feeling of the rocks that he enchants with with this uh, spell. But uh, he can tell that something sort of like it's like. There are prerequisites to casting spells, such as the mm -hmm. components, verbal and somatic, and also um, the targets. And uh, yes. for for magic stone, this you need to target pebbles. This is a real stone. <laughs> and, yeah, this is this is basically the feedback he gets from that. Uh, it's like he didn't cast it on a, on a pebble. It's like he tried to do it on on something else. It's not a real rock. You're yes. been scammed. That's a takeaway from this. It's gonna end up being a dragon bone. It's a shame that the professor is dunked into water and isn't isn't witnessing this trial <laughs> and error weight of deduction. Pip uh, takes out a chunk of coal in his pouch and starts writing notes on the raft. On the raft. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> All right, that's it for now. <laughs> Just Pip is going to be watching it intently from now on, just mm -hmm. to see if the colors change before his very eyes. 
It takes about 15 minutes for Pontifex to just feel comfortable to pull his head out of the water, but um, if he tries to eat anything else for the rest of the day, he will not be able to taste it. <laughs> now um, is the chance to eat as healthy as possible, even when it tastes like nothing. <laughs> and um, pulling his head out of the water, he did see that Pip is in the process of writing things on the raft. It's probably so. just some doodles of no consequence. No worries, he can have his fun. <laughs> this is, of course, nothing academic or scientific. <laughs> so the Atura Philly uh, material, it's its shimmery, almost metallic-like, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, Talix is going to scoop up some water in his hand and like pour it over the edge of the blanket and see what happens. Um, it is completely waterproof. Yeah, expected as much. All right, Talix is gonna wrap himself up in that and try to catch <laughs> up on sleep. <laughs> okay. Uh, it looks like Brooke is stuck on uh, uh, on uh, driving duty for a little while until Tekka wakes up. You got uh. this, Brooke. <laughs> Okay. Uh, and then eventually night falls and uh, um, you guys wake up Tekka and Tekka resumes uh, uh, driving the, the raft. Um, and you are... Uh, at this point, make sure all of you have had one long rest, if you haven't taken it already. Um, it's, it's been a little rough um, because of, of the weather, uh, but ultimately you've managed to like, recover. Um, from just the, the trials of uh, um, of the day when you met the witch. And nice. uh, perfect time to take a short break. All right. Before I'll we see get you in 10 minutes. By, by a Kraken. <laughs> River Kraken. No. Oh, God. Whoa! Structure like, like that same sort of thing where there's eight people in a pool like taking turns, but the actual like mechanics of the game itself are new to me. Yeah, pretty sure you don't have to think that much. You can just play it on the side. Huh. Interesting. So is the stream back? Yes. Nice. <clears throat> Hello. 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 I'm curious about what you guys were talking oh. about. <coughs> Team well, Five Austin Tactics. Was... It crashed. Yeah. I'll be mm. back. Okay. Yeah, I saw you disconnected at some point. He tried to leave, but he cannot escape. <clears throat> you can know. check out any time you'd like. <laughs> but you, but can you can never, never leave. leave. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> So, out of curiosity, while we've been on this little river journey, have you seen anything exciting, like, on the land as we've been going? It's mostly been forests and plains. Uh, have there been any roads we've seen as we've gone? Um, no, you haven't come across any roads. Um, the, the nice thing about traveling down this river means that you're, like, going gently down to series of hills so, so you have like a lot of uh, um 
open space that you can look down uh, onto. And it's nice because you can you can immediately see if there's anything like nearby, um, anything flying in the distance, anything approaching you. But it's otherwise been a rather quiet uh, uh, journey with, um, you know, on your second day of travel, the only thing you have seen being the, the Yavelsi wagon. No mechanical birds in the sky? No mechanical us? birds in the sky. You know, I don't know if I realized at first that this isn't actually the river that runs to Aria. Yeah, it's the one We're north of to, it, so you will have yeah, to leave it, it at some point. Bend, mm -hmm. Yeah. Once we start, once we've been to the south and back west, we should get it's off. That's the wrong one. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, resuming where we left off, uh, uh, it's now nighttime. Tekka is steering the raft. And Pip uh, is a person who is currently awake. Um, all right, well, let's get right into it. Uh, Tech and Pip, about an hour into your watch. Uh, an enormous pair of pincers suddenly bursts up from the water and <laughs> clicks uh -oh. as it opens and closes. <laughs> Another pair of claws grabs onto the edge of the raft, which rocks and tilts to the side. Uh, onto the raft climbs a machine in the shape of a giant Whoa. crab. Ah! <laughs> the, the whirring and spinning of mechanisms fills the air as the machine moves towards Tekka. Everyone roll initiative. Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> right as you were asking. I've discovered they're allergic to thunder dragon breath. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Would you say the crab is humanoid looking? No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Just making sure. Uh oh. Uh. You know, I'd say this uh, raft is pro to collapsing if a giant mechanical crab boarded it. Uh, <laughs> so we should be uh, scared. How do I get there? Is it okay? I, so is that about the size it is? Oh uh, yeah. Okay. Oh, we okay. Our, <clears throat> we need okay. our oh. bars. It. It's a big scrap you've ever seen. We need our. We need our bars. What bars? Oh, oh sorry. Bars. Ah, here you go. Thank you. Oh God! Now I can't see anything. Except this one. Yeah, people Astrid. should be healed right now. Mm hmm There we go. <clears throat> oh boy. <clears throat> Machines. I'm pretty man. sure there are crabs that are that size in real life. Or at least close to it. Hmm. Those spider spider crabs are pretty crazy. Small issue. <clears throat> ah, my initiative tracker is broken. Oh, oh no! It was working earlier. I tested it right before the session. So let me just uh, let me just save this and reload. Did you change something on it? Uh no. The only thing I can think of is that I hid the bars, and but I'd be surprised if that broke it somehow. Japanese like spider crabs, that. fully grown, reach a leg span of 12 feet. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah that's like with their legs like fully unfurled. The, the, yeah, the body, the body is a lot smaller. But, yeah. yeah, and like, I mean, they're huge. Still, still yeah. Yeah. Body size <clears throat> of 15 it's inches. It's not a 12 foot crab. I will concede that's that this terrifying. is not, uh, this, uh, using the word giant would not have been uh, accurate for this Larger one. Larger than average. A larger than expected crab. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh man. Oh. Hey, all the right. The Tasmanian giant crab is a bulky one. These machines aren't giving up, man. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, Pip and Tekka had a perception of seven, uh, and they missed this. So everybody's surprised. Meaning that the the crab goes. Uh, and be prepared for a shift uh, in uh, 
uh, music genre. Ooh. Sea shanty. Oh. Robot music. <laughs> I love the name of this. <laughs> uh, oh. I'm just waiting for everyone to load in. There we go. All right. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. Okay. Oh. Like some Metroid or Mega Man style music? Like F Zero? Old school. I like it. Yeah. It's, it's okay. Pokemon it's Steel type gym. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right. So we're going to start with uh, the crab on its uh, um, surprise round. Ladarian Kingler. It is. Uh, um, so the the raft is currently tilted a little bit in this direction. Um, everyone who was uh, uh, sleeping is like in the process of waking up. Um, and uh, yeah, Tekka. The the crab is going straight for you and uh, trying uh, to strike you uh, on your belt where you are carrying a uh, uh, Jamuel. Oh no. Uh, he will do one attack uh, with each claw. Um, with a natural three that does not hit. No, it was. Uh... This is a 13? Nope. Okay. Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, you, you were uh, just fast enough, despite like this thing just showing up out of nowhere. Um, the fact that the raft kind of ended up being slightly unbalanced and tilting down actually worked to your favor. Um, as like you leaning to one side is what ultimately prevented the, the crab from hitting you. Um, and now we go at the top of the initiative. So, Brooke, um, you, I, I need a dexterity saving throw from you. Dexterity. Mhm. Mm right. I did. Yep. All right. So, uh, Brooke, all of a sudden you wake up and there's like that, that split second where you have no idea where you actually are or what is going on. Uh, but you like instantly reach out and hold on to something. And uh, be before you know it, your feet are into the water. Uh, but you have like, you have, you're holding on to one edge of the raft and you pull yourself back up. Uh, so you're not in the water. You are right where your token is and you can take your turn normally. Oh. Um, do you have dark vision? I don't. Then, um, you're... you have a potion that makes you light up. <laughs> you do, uh, <laughs> and in the, in the current conditions, without any other source of light, you can see uh, a the slight reflection of the moonlight on something mechanical clicking and whirring directly to your left. No, that's no problem. Um, <clears throat> I guess to be able to see, I will do the Ride of the Dawn. A one before damage to myself, which makes my sword light up once coming into contact with. Okay, uh, I believe that's a what, 20 foot radius of light? I think so. I think it's 20 plus 20 like a torch. Um, meaning that the yeah, entire raft 20. would be visible to everyone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As long as you're on it. Okay. Alright, I still have one hit, right? Since that is only a bonus action. Or yeah. just a pulling in already. Okay, if I see the metal crap, I will swing for it. Okay. <clears throat> My oh, roll tower. No. Ah, oh, when did this happen? I don't know. <laughs> My die tower is the producing dice. What? <laughs> oh, it is now. Okay. Never mind. <laughs> All sorts of issues today. Oof. <laughs> Womp. 
Uh, a nine will hit? not hit. Nope. Okay. Dennis! <laughs> Can you roll a double digit number one time? <laughs> Before this campaign ends. That's a day. I have five net 20s. Even though it doesn't really say net 20s at the moment from my point of view. <laughs> yeah, all the text is messed up. <laughs> oh no! It's either net five 20. or three. It's five. Not the tw twenty tens. <laughs> yeah, I see. Five. Okay. Everything's fine on my end except for uh, Austin's entirety. <laughs> what? Anything else on Brooks's turn? Oh yeah. Oh no. Uh, <laughs> no. Okay, Taka. Another success successful turn where I hurt myself more than the enemy. Taka, <laughs> 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 uh, I need a dexterity saving throw from you as well. Wait, no, no, no. Oh. Um. Yeah, no, I, I do. I do. <laughs> okay. I probably should have done this before the crab attack, but uh, it's fine. Fine. Uh, okay. I'm going to use inspiration on that. All right. That is an 11. Uh, 11 plus 3? Or does it do the modifier? I don't, yeah, yeah. Uh, your, your okay. dexterity save. Okay, yeah, then that's uh, 15, uh, 16. 16. Okay, uh, a 16 passes. Uh, so, again, um, as the rafter uh, is tilting on one side and you're trying to dodge the, the, the crab's attacks, so, um, you find yourself with like one foot almost over the edge, but you 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 correct your posture and you um, you balance in the opposite direction, and you're just uh, comfortably standing uh, where you were. Uh, and you may proceed with your turn. Okay. Uh, Tekka kind of swiftly shifts back uh, into the raft, and will start to row using his uh, <laughs> shovel towards uh, this right side. Uh, of the river, trying to also steady the rafts. It doesn't just uh, go over it. Yeah. Okay, you want to push the raft uh, in that direction? Yes. And also uh -huh. just trying to steady it so there's just doesn't, yeah. Turn sorry, to, uh, sorry to interrupt real quick. Um, Tekka was here before, right? Where I'm pointing. Yeah. Is there flanking? Do you do flanking rules? We do flanking rules. So Brooke would have had flanking. He should have, yeah. What's you your wanna give room? it another try, Brooke? Does that mean I can roll again? Yeah. yeah. Oh, is it advantage? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool, 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 cool. I thought I recalled something about flanking in this game. <laughs> I don't want Brooke to just kill himself and nothing else. <laughs> Here comes the one. I'm flanking myself. Hey. Okay, 18 would have hit. Hey. Alright, let, let, sure, let's do that. Cool, cool, cool. Sorry, I don't want to retcon too much. I just want to make sure. No, no, yeah, no, that, yeah, that. Thank you for good, reminding good me. Yeah. Brooks doing damage! <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, uh, I think the second one is the, the uh, lightning. Is it lightning? No. Ah, uh, uh, it's radiant. Radiant, yeah. <clears throat> So three yeah. radiant and eleven normal. You get plus. Sorry, yeah, that's crazy. Okay. Yeah, if I hit, I hit hard. <laughs> if I hit, um. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. It uh, it takes the full extent of the damage. Uh, your your sword just goes. Wait, am I uh fourteen? Yeah. Um. You chop off one of its tiny legs. Uh, it has seven more, uh, but it was just a very clean strike. And you can see the this, these uh, small bit of mat metal uh, clanking onto the raft and then falling into the water and sinking in. Hmm. Okay, uh, oh. what was Tekka doing? Tekka was trying to push the raft uh, in this direction. To the right side, yeah. Sh uh, mm -hmm. Shifted back on the raft and then just shouting. Everyone, 
up. Threat up front. Okay. Uh, with you being here, uh, in order to move the raft in this direction, you need to be like on one of these edges, but you're also trying to balance it, like you're shifting your weight towards the middle. Um, yeah. So I would say that he moves uh, on this round. Uh, do an athletics check. It will move five feet, and like if it, uh, if you roll high enough, it will move more. Got. It. Unless you roll a natural one. <laughs> Not too okay. so hot. It, it moves. <laughs> it moves five feet. Uh, it uh, it gets. Uh, um, unfortunately, I'll have to like just redraw this every time. Uh, oh, we, we can do mind pals. Then we know we've uh, gotten five no, feet the minis. closer. We have, we have to move all the minis. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. 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 Okay. That's Dekka's turn. Uh, Squeak wakes up when some water splash onto him. Ah. <coughs> now, give me a break. Uh, Squeak in rat form is going to transform into imp form. Okay. Um... I'm not going to make him roll the dexterity saving throw. Like even if he even if he ends up like uh, rolling down a little bit towards Brook, he just he's in the process of transforming into something that can fly. Okay. Uh, you said um, imp, right? What's that? Uh, what is he yeah, turning imp. into? Imp. Okay. Yeah. Good. Good. And is going to hover. <laughs> Why can't I grab him? <laughs> I can't. Oh, there we go. Oh, thanks. I don't no know problem. why I couldn't. <laughs> uh, is going to just hover over the mechanical crab and uh, will use the help action. So whoever whoever attacks it with an attack next uh, will will get advantage. Mm -hmm. You have to pick a specific person. Um, a specific to person. <laughs> why uh, are you saying it like that? <laughs> Tekken will probably be busy moving the raft. You'd probably see that from here. I don't know. It's a um, is very likely going into the water unwillingly, so probably not. <laughs> we'll do if Brooks. This is a deck save. Pontifex might as well already be at the bottom of the river. <laughs> what do you do to me now? You are being helped against your will. Against as your will. <laughs> Stop resisting and let me help you. <laughs> uh all right that yeah okay, let me let me do this thing real quick i'm just gonna grab uh, the table <laughs> yeah we can what? use this as a, as a raft oh hey <laughs> that's, that's the right dimensions oh. yeah just about i'll just um uh i was not prepared to run this over the water, but it absolutely works. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let me make it not snap to the grid. And make it just slightly wider and less long. Ta-da! Very nice. Beautiful. And let's see if we can even do angles. I was fully expecting our minis to just launch off into the distance. Whoa. Perfect. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. Oh, it's real heavy. Iridium crab. <laughs> That's kind of rude. <laughs> Talix, uh, it's your turn. So you, okay. uh, you were like in the process of uh, tumbling. Uh, towards this direction and you end up just like hitting against the Tekka uh, before you have a chance to really like fall anywhere. Um, so you, <laughs> you you wake up <laughs> in this state, one of your feet is dangling, uh, one of your feet is dangling off the uh, the side of the raft and the rest of you is pressed up against the Tekka. Uh, yeah, so Alex is just gonna first just kind of like scramble to get up and 
you know, rather flustered, uh, apologize to Tekka, uh, and then before kind of looking around and seeing what's actually going on. Uh, so I can see that the crab is gunning for a Janula right now, right? Uh, yeah, it's attention, despite the fact that, uh, like, you, the moment you look over here, Brook is in the process of attacking it, but it, the, the crab seems to stay focused on Tekka. Um, um, so you can, yeah, you can make the guess. All right. Uh, yeah, Talix is just going to uh, hurriedly get out his orb and uh, hold it towards Tekka and um, just going to say a little prayer. Tekka's going to emit a faint glow and Talix is going to cast Sanctuary. So the crab will have to pass a wisdom saving throw in order to attack him from now on. Ah, uh -huh. okay. Sanctuary. Yeah. Any creature targets the warded creature with an attack or armor for spell must first make a wisdom saving throw, and on a failed save, they must choose a new target or lose the attack or spell. Now that is just a bonus action. I can still take an action. Uh, with what little movement I have left, I'm going to step over here and try to shove the crab into the water. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so a push. Uh, I'll need an athletics check. It's okay. This is Talix's specialty. Are you like ramming your walking stick at it, or? Oh uh, well, yeah. I thought about. I wasn't sure if she'd kind of does an attack, but yeah, I think that's what he'd do. He'd rather try to like prod it off rather than get too close to those claws if he could. Okay. Yeah. Just um, poke it. Your your walking stick hits the side of the crab and pushes it a few inches back, and the crab uses one of its claws to just grab it, and you can feel the the, the wood of your staff uh, creaking and on the verge of snapping. Oh no! <laughs> it's okay, I can save it next round. <laughs> <laughs> That's it for your talks. Okay. And the crab lets, lets go of the stick, uh, which now has these very uh, deep indents of both, on both ends of it, uh, and then goes for Tekka again. Must make a wisdom save. Uh, wisdom is... Mm, I have a total of 12. That fails. Okay, so It it's... must choose a new target. Okay. Um, so it, it brings up a claw and seems very... Hold on. Um, that is a very interesting scenario. The crab can't be compelled to act in a manner contrary to its nature and its instructions. Hmm. Ha! Huh. Mm. Well, mm. Uh, there, yeah, there's magic at play. So, it tries to attack Tekka. Um, and you see it lift up a claw and just try to bring it down on Tekka, but it, like, it slows down. Um, and it, it, it's shaking a little bit, like it's trying really hard to keep going, but it's like there is some invisible force that's stopping it. And then it lifts up the arm, and then turns around and slams it into, into Brook. Um, for a 17 to hit. Nope. 17 misses. <laughs> How about... Uh, yeah. this also misses. That's right, we got two vigils in our party now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, moving on to Pip's turn. Okay. Uh... <clears throat> uh, Pip, seeing that Talix was trying to push this crab off, Pip is going to do the same thing from where he is. Just focus his mind and energy on that crab and try and... Uh, push it away as much as he can. So it okay. needs to make a strength saving throw. It's a strength saving throw. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Ten. Ten, it fails. 
So it's pushed five feet away from Pip. Uh, that would be straight down. Okay, Oof. yeah. And finally, as it's as, it, as it's flailing around and trying to hit Brooke, um, it, an invisible force suddenly manages to do what Talos' stick couldn't, and the uh, the large machine uh, slides off the edge of the raft and plump into the water. Does it sink down? Just <laughs> uh, it's out of view. I'm not sure if this is better. <laughs> now it's an unseen threat. <laughs> Just scarier. Um, and then for Pip's action, uh, hmm, hmm. Dodge? <laughs> <laughs> Question mark. <laughs> I guess. Uh, Pontifex. Um, uh, at this Where point, I don't Jamil? need. Um, Jamil oh, is on Tekka's hip, uh, with the boat back in an upright position. Uh, Pontifex like just rolled a foot to one side as he was in the process of waking up. Uh, but yeah, your mini is right over here, and I will not need a save. Um, and yeah, well, before he could scramble to his feet, he saw what happened over here with the crab. So even though uh, the, the machine is out of view... he clearly saw that it's the mechanical crab. Yes. Uh, the, the, the way the light reflected off of it from, from Brooks' sword, it, it, it was, uh, it was um, uh, unmistakable. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, would you say that the... Jamuel Tome weighs less than 10 pounds. Uh, <laughs> or is it some kind me. of like freakishly heavy book? Yeah, no, 10 pounds, uh, the, the kilograms, it should be lighter, yeah? yeah it's uh, it's like a reasonably it's big book. Reasonable it's like, book on the planet. Yeah, it's an, less than 10, but... it's an encyclopedia. It is one of the book. it is on the larger side as far as books go, but not that much. Yeah, I think Pontifex is gonna like scramble up to his feet and uh, uh, like get these after the book, uh, and he's gonna uh, cast Mage Hand uh, and try to pick up Jamuel. Okay, well, um, is Tekka going to let it happen? Uh, yeah, if Pontifex said that, then yeah. yes. All right. And, and his hand—it's um, not invisible; it's a visible six-fingered hand. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's uh, right. And grabs the book and goes uh, 30 feet straight up in the air with it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now the birds are to come. Now the birds. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe not 30 feet, by, like 15 feet up. By sea, by air, nowhere safe. Oh, maybe that book is more than 10 feet. <laughs> <laughs> it's the size of the raft. We should be writing on that. Yeah. <laughs> and we go to a bunker on the ground when this robot molds. Yeah. Giant robot worms. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So normally it's something like 15 feet in the air. Something like this would uh, not be easy to do on you know an unwilling target, especially because like you are, the mage and actually have to has to um, unclasp the leathers that tied to the belt. Uh, but in the in the six seconds or just over six seconds at your disposal, uh, you're able to do that. Cool. Uh, and I think, I think it's everything. Uh, um, uh, I did a cantrip as a main action, so I can't. But uh, did anyone get hurt? Yeah. I myself. Uh, <laughs> barely. Yeah, he's fine. Yeah, that's my turn. <laughs> I think actually Pontifex is going to step forward. <clears throat> and that's the turn. Okay. Uh, at the beginning of round two, um, with the light from Brook's uh, weapon uh, shimmering in your surroundings, uh, at this time uh, you're all able to see other shapes in the water uh, glistening and approaching. Well, there's one, there's more, huh? Hopefully they cannot fly. 
Hopefully they're all crabs and not lobsters. Lobsters are scarier. Or octopi. Oh, good. <laughs> <clears throat> Should we head towards the land? That's what Tech is doing, yeah, I think. Yeah, Tech is working on it. Need help, okay. need help. Um, Brook, starting with you. You can see others. They're like beneath the water surface, but uh, just a foot beneath, and they, they do appear able to swim, despite the, their, their, their surprising weight. All right, I would like to hold my attack action until someone comes in range. Okay. Then Tekka. Tekka will continue rowing and rowing towards the land. All right, take a, do another athletics check. Can do. You know what? I'm going to use my second inspiration for this. Yeah! <laughs> All right! <laughs> yeah! Ooh, there we yeah. go! 20! In total. Okay. So, 5. <clears throat> 15, 20. Yeah. Okay! Oh, you can just move the raft and it pulls us all on. <laughs> Cute. Oh, I missed That's the book, though. Oh, oh the wait, book. <laughs> where, would the book be? Ah, uh, huh. I guess it would stay where it is. Yeah, like you have to use. Yeah, yourself. you have to use your. <laughs> Does this levitate? It's Mage Hand. Mage hand. It's Mage Hand. Oh, it's Mage Hand. <laughs> okay, this is fun. Uh, all right. So yeah, Te Teka, you're, pu you're putting some effort in, like, at this point you can actually feel, um, we get close enough to the shore that you're about to, um, that your raft is about to, like, touch the land. Tower <laughs> of crabs. <laughs> they just Voltron up. <laughs> Grab the book. We are close. We could jump this. Okay. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> it's um, a fast crab. <laughs> there's lots of movement in water. Um, hmm. Yeah, it's there's like just a big propeller on the back. <laughs> <laughs> it just gets like all the way over here. It's and a hella crab. <laughs> looks up. <laughs> it can fly. <laughs> <laughs> um, and from its back, you see fire propelling him upward. No, yes. he, he attacks Pip. <laughs> Yes! <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <coughs> Pip. Um, oh, I'm on the wrong sheet. Yeah. 17 to hit. It hits me. Wait, wait! Did wait, you wait, roll oh. with disadvantage? Uh, oh, you're dodging! Oh, you're right! Ah, it's a better roll. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> but thank you for the reminder. Okay, that will be eight bludgeoning damage. Oh um, no! As the 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 claw falls upon you and closes down around one of your legs, and uh, you are grappled. It lets out a yelp. Then it attacks with a second. It's still a disadvantage because grapple doesn't change that. Oh my god, that's still a hit. Mm. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's nine. Uh, it's nineteen to hit. Yeah. And. Uh, oh my goodness! Another nineteen with disadvantage. Yeah. Wow. And that is six bludgeoning damage. These crabs ain't messing around. Uh, squeak. Oh boy. Um, okay. Mm. Squeak. Well, squeak, squeak was flying earlier, right? Yes. So squeak it wouldn't is... have been moved along with the boat. It would be like still. True. Uh, but it's like five feet up. Okay. Um, squeak is going to come over here then and 
Hmm. Yeah, I guess just stay near this crab. Um, nothing Squeak can do as an action right now. Uh, other than, I suppose, turn invisible. <laughs> so, we'll do that. Uh, um, run it by me one more time. What is he doing? Squeak is coming over here, and while, while he's coming over here, he's turning invisible. Invisible, okay. Yeah. Um, this is 10 feet. I'll, although, actually, sorry, let me change my mind if that's all right. Can Squeak use his action to try and break the grapple on Pip? Um, that requires him pushing one of them away, right? Uh, I guess. <laughs> I, I think that's how you break a you, you break a grapple, uh, in in D and D. Um. So like yep. maybe he could that's like try and swoop in and just try and push the crab off. Yeah. Okay. He can he can give it a try. Okay. Seeing seeing Pip in dire straits here, he'll. Give that a shot. W what should I do? Uh, the, for it's a it's a for a shot action. It's like a grapple, so it's athletics for squeak. Okay. Um, I think there might be. Is he tiny? Mm-hmm. I th maybe you can't shove somebody that's uh, that's uh, two sizes oh, the, bigger than, the crab. than you. Oh, is the crab medium? Crab is medium, yeah. Oh. Um, I'm not sure what the rule is regarding that. The target must be no more than one size larger than you. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh. <laughs> hmm, okay. <laughs> I realized I was muted. <laughs> oh? Uh, w were you saying something, Jason? Well, no, it doesn't. It doesn't really matter. At okay. This point. Then I guess original plan. Okay, he's invisible. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Can we? Sorry, I'm curious. Custom. Oh, a color tint. A hundred. Apply. Aha. Ooh. Oh wow! <laughs> very. Blends in. Very transparent. Okay, then Talix, it's your turn. Okay. Uh, well, after telling Tekka to just keep rowing, which is probably not very helpful, <laughs> uh, seeing what happens to Pip, Talos is going to try to somehow, <laughs> I don't know if it's realistic for him to try to jump past these people while yeah, they're yeah, it's fine. or whatever. Like, okay. they, don't, they don't occupy their full, like, five feet uh, of uh, right, their square, right. yeah, there's space between them. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, seeing this, Talix is just going to do whatever he can to get this crab off of him, so he's just going to cast Shillelagh and whack this thing. Okay. Whack a crab. Yep. <laughs> Hi. All right. Ah, here it is. Uh... Okay. 19, 19 hit. hits. Uh, it's lagging. Can't roll the dice. Oh, no. There we go. Five bludgeoning. Okay. Uh, your your weapon connects, uh, reinforced by by your spell. Uh, so the, the the damage that's been done into it, it's uh, currently not factoring into this, and you just whack it. All right, that's all I can do. Okay, um, this will be the very first crab uh, who returns 
to the surface after disappearing for a few seconds. Um, and the moment it, it breaches the surface of the water, Brook, you can take your held attack against it. <coughs> so hard for me for some reason to summon a d20 help. Yeah, they're... Yeah, sorry, reloading reloading messed up things, because uh, as we've learned, I'm supposed to oh, actually restart the entire way. client. 19 hits, otherwise you're... The numbers get messed up, and yeah, you have something over your button, that's why you can't press it. This one too? I need in the 8 and the 4. <laughs> Here you go. <coughs> Oh, uh, this, that's 14 again? Yeah. This time only two Radiant. Okay. Uh, and as the, the crab emerges from the surface of the water, you slash down at it and you cleave um, off of it one of its large uh, pincers uh, this time and it just falls down to the bottom of the river and when the crab tries um, to get back onto the boat and only has one left, uh, it only does one attack against you. <sighs> 12, doesn't it? Nope. Okay, Pip! Um, okay. Your ankle <laughs> is in this, uh, this pair of claws. Yeah! Uh, Pip, uh, in the midst of crying out, uh, he, as he as he lets out this yell, he pushes his hand straight forward and is going to try as a bonus action to uh, send this crab five feet away. Mm -hmm. uh, so it needs to make a strength saving throw. Eight. Oh god! <laughs> Man, these fails. robots are pushovers. <laughs> so it needs to go five feet directly away from, mm -hmm. from Pip. Hmm. So yeah, your grapple is broken. Um, this thing is pushed away. Um, could we say that at the same time as that, uh, Squeak took an attack with Pip's action? <laughs> yeah, but, uh, you, yeah, you can... Let's pretend Clank it's rules? in the opposite order. <laughs> <Clank Cool. rules. laughs> yeah, yeah, take, take the attack. Okay. And since it's in V... Oh no, it does not have advantage. Oh, interesting. Oh, they've got blind blindsight or something. Uh, okay. Let's see if that works. We got sort of the double. <laughs> okay, so that's actually a seven to okay, hit. Okay, seven does not hit. Hmm. And Squeak returns to being visible. Uh, Pip is going to m move behind, like, as close over here as possible, actually. <laughs> as close to the shore. Okay. Yep. Uh, then the second uh, crab uh, swims quickly towards Brook. Uh, this one still having both of its claws as he tries to hold onto Brook uh, with them. So the first attack is a 17 to hit, nope. which I think is yeah. And the second one is a 26 to hit. <laughs> yeah. For 11 bludgeoning damage. Ooh. And you are grappled. Um, okay, I need to keep track of the fact that this is the one during the grappling. Got it! Uh, Pontifex, you, um, you know your spell well, and you know that if at any point your, your mage end is over, more than 30 feet away from you, uh, it's going to, uh, to go away. 
And currently, yeah. I, I, how many feet up is it? Is it 10? 15. Is it 15? Okay, so the book is 18 feet away from you right now. Or about 20. Uh, then he's going to use his action to move it 30 feet um, to like over here where my pointer is. Uh, other one, yeah, there you go. And like starting from here, it would be yeah, 30 here. Uh, on the shore, so I guess one more down over here. There you go. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Okay. On the shore and as far this way as possible. Perfect. All right. Is it about? Uh, one oh. more to the right. You can see the shadow. Yeah, I'm ground. looking at the shadow. Uh, hi, no, pumpkin. One more over. Uh. Above this the way. above yep. the shore ground. There we go. Sorry, it's, it's a little clunky. I got it. I got it. Um, but that's not. Is it? Uh... Okay, yeah. Uh, and then, um, as a bonus action, uh, he's going to cast Healing Word on Pip. Meh. <laughs> 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 oh yeah, I guess this is technically divine magic. Yay. Uh, 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 I've got. It. <laughs> yes, we you need it like... every time. There we go. Yay! <laughs> yeah. Uh, just so comforting to hear. Yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's his way of saying, uh, feel better, but in go. Pip yeah. would understand it. He's been uh, I actually don't no, understand you, your, yeah. your magic. <laughs> yeah. Pip but there's just something so comforting now. about hearing, Mah! nothing <laughs> like a little goat bleeding to heal up your grievous wounds. <laughs> Uh, and he's casting this at second level. Okay. Hmm. What's up, oh. Pumpkin? He heals this much? Uh, that's okay. He would thank you if he could. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and Pontifex is going to try to actually head to shore, because it seems pretty apparent that's where Tekka is heading the boat, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, he's gonna, and uh, the close to the shore we established is pretty, sh pretty shallow. Yeah, right? you'd be able to walk on this on this spot. Perfect. Can you just head straight here? Yeah, we can just call like this one tile difficult terrain. So it would just be like an extra five feet. Uh, I don't have an extra. Oh, you, that's there. right, you don't. <laughs> I, have, I have twenty foot speed. Yeah. Uh, uh, so here the water is like just at your ankles. Uh, and that's it. Okay. Uh, at the beginning of the third round, the mechanical crabs that are currently in the water. Um, okay. Who would this affect? Um, Talix and Brook. Both of you need to roll a dexterity saving throw. No problem. Mm -hmm. So the boat is slightly tilted. Yeah. Oh, that was that was so uh, close to being oh, terrible. Wow. I'm pretty sure that's not enough, right? Here. 20 dexterity can't save you from the darkness. <laughs> All right, I'll roll. What the whisper? Oh my god, plus whisper. seven. Oh, a what spiration? Which spiration? Yeah. Oh. Whoa. Ooh. There it is. Twenty six. Twenty six. Let me out. <laughs> <laughs> Get me out of this hell. <laughs> <laughs> so both of the crabs are currently in the water, and uh, um. This one only has one arm left, so it can't. Um, they they pull back one of their large pincers and just like sort of like splash up this wave of water up uh, uh, against Alex and Brooke. And the strength, like the amount of water that splashes onto you, is enough to almost knock you off your feet. Uh, but Brooke, you're just you're a little too heavy uh, to be pushed back by this. And Talix, you just uh, you were. You saw it coming, and you kind of dodged. Uh, you leaned forward, and most of it went over you. 
Uh, so Pip gets sprayed with water a little bit and tech and the two of you behind Oh no, them. I melt. Uh, <laughs> 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 and uh, we proceed as usual with Brooks's turn. Brooks' turn. Does that mean I'm... That was not to get out of the grapple, right? Uh, you're was... No, no, you're still grappled. Yeah, has to stay on your feet. All right, can I break out of the grapple? You can, yeah, you can try. Uh, you can roll acrobatics against the crabs' athletics. Cool, 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 cool. That will take your action, though. I mean, I, I can't move while being grappled, right? Uh, yeah, that's right. right. Can someone summon a d20 for me, please? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not lag. They're, they're yeah, yeah, there's, like there's double. things yeah, overlapped. So. Um, I couldn't click mine either if I clicked on the dice, but if I click like on the out, outer rim of like the ring around it, it worked. You had to find the right spot. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, I need to roll. Fantastic check. <gasps> I have a 22. Whoa. Oh no! Dennis rolled well! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well? I guess that's my turn? Guess I'll die. <laughs> Tekka! So yeah, Tekka rows, rows, rows this boat frantically <laughs> to the right of the screen. Uh, <laughs> Uh, it's okay, just ram me with it. Yeah, without a check, you would reach the edge because it's it's always five feet. Uh, um. Got it. Okay. So... Can I just can I do an athletics roll to make sure the raft stays on land? Oh, to like push it for further onto yeah. the land. Yeah, yeah, you can. Yeah. Okay. Okay, doesn't. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, all it does is uh, you manage to get it forward uh, just a little bit more, and uh, um, the the bottom of uh, your side of the of the raft uh, hits something, and it's it's just kind of there. Like a good enough push might dislodge it back towards the middle of the river. It doesn't go as far as you would have liked. Got it. Um, hmm. And yeah, I think it's first at this moment that Tech Guy is like <laughs> refocusing his attention as anything else other than rowing this raft. Um, and seeing this happen, uh, seeing Brooke being like. How does this look like? Is it by the claws? Yeah, one of these uh, is holding uh, one of Brooks's legs with its claws. Uh, this crab only has one arm left, the, the clawed one. Uh, but they're both just at, uh, very focused on taking down Brook. Okay. Oh. Okay, I think Tekka will move over here. That probably is that an attack op opportunity or? Ah uh, no. Okay. Then he stays there and can't really do much now or <laughs> this time around. <laughs> okay. End of turn. Grab number three is this one. Ah, uh, is squeak within reach of the water? I believe so, because yep. it attacked the crab earlier, right? Yep. Okay. Um, the crab is going to take care of this problem. Did you just call my friend a problem? <laughs> uh, that is a 25 to hit. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. <laughs> oh, no. Ah. Uh, and it's 13 yeah, yeah. points of damage. It's okay, oh. he's, he's resistant. Yeah, he's oh, resistant, yeah. not magical. That's right, he is, okay. Just All one right, more cool. attack, right? Second attack. <laughs> <laughs> uh, mm, that, is, that is 14 to hit? Uh-oh, that hits. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> it's fine, it's fine, just seven or lower. Uh, 
13. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> to the beach. Uh, squeak. Uh, to explodes. the beach. Oh it's, my god. It's just this, this just gory, disgusting mess. No. And, and then like all the individual pieces burn up into ash. He Where deals 1d100 fire squeak. damage to everything within 5 feet. Ah. <laughs> uh. Uh, uh. I mean, How many fine, spaces man. away is the beach? 240. Perfect. Oh, that's pretty close. And the crab climbs onto the boat, onto the rafts, um, tilting it further this way. And at this point, it's a very significant weight difference. <laughs> is the tilted raft giving me half cover? <laughs> <laughs> Talix, I need a deck save guys, from you. Guys, uh What? Dang it. What? what? How do I What? How do I What? I what? don't remember how to get screenshots. Oh, F F12. <laughs> okay, well, if you guys can look, I know how to take the screenshot. Uh, now <laughs> oh, Okay. Oh, sorry. <laughs> if you guys want to look under the table, you might see what I'm seeing, but I don't know if you'll see it the same way I'm seeing it. Is it Pontifex's feet? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dennis sent me that earlier. Oh, he did? Oh, what? It's been there a minute. Yeah, what? I just what? saw that. Like, I just yeah. zoomed back because I, I saw it. <laughs> there are what feet you... under the table. That's where they belong. What? What, what yeah. are you talking about? You, you don't I'll, see it? I'll show you later. Yeah, she oh. won't see it. It's just through us. Oh, yeah. Okay, oh. back saving throw. Let's go. <laughs> Uh, oh right, I can't do it. I, that did, way. I didn't expect reason. to hear to be talking about Pontifex's feet today. Me neither. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Always twenty. Yeah, uh, Talix, you're you're basically you you basically knocked oh on God. your on your hands and feet, uh, but you pull yourself up without uh, without slipping off the raft, and um, you you can act on your turn normally. Okay, so getting pretty out of control up here. Okay, so right now only one crab is a big problem, and that's the one holding Brooke. And is that one or two? It's two. Okay. But can't really get to it. That um, one is really hard. I think. The first one, yeah. It's missing an, enti an entire claw. And one leg. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I'm... I'm engaged now. To who? To the crab number three. Congratulations. Yeah, <laughs> oh god, I think I just touched your... I think I just accidentally erased your hit points. Who's <laughs> <laughs> trying to bring up the menu? I, I think it is, uh, yeah, stable mini. Oh. The oldest DMing trick in the book. There, does this work? Let me let me see. Oh, yeah, look, it uh, it keeps you upright. Cool. Um. Ah, uh, whatever. I'll I'll go for it. Oh wait, I'm not getting out of range, so it's fine. Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna try to charge at this thing and knock it off to give uh to give Brooke a way back. Just try to like charge into it. And kick it. Uh, okay. So athletics? Yes. I'm not sure if that entered correctly or not. Dang it. Six. Against... Huh. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that uh, if uh, if both sides roll the same number, <laughs> then the situation remains unchanged. I think that's how it works. I thought it was meets it beats it. Well, but we're both rolling checks, so it's yeah. I, when, I don't it, know. when it's uh, when it's checks, uh, uh. when it's uh, contested checks, I believe uh, yeah, ties mean that uh, nothing changes. Uh. I rolled a six. 
a tie results in status quo. If the contest results in a tie, the situation remains the same as it was before the contest. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, so despite finding like a good spot uh, to, to, to push it from uh, and, it, and the crab being a little out of balance due to the, to the angle of the, of the raft, um, ultimately it's just a little bit too heavy for your stick to push it. Okay. Gonna need a bigger stick. Slightly broken stick. Oh. All right, that's it. Mm, it's this one. Um, since it's only been gently poked by Talix, he will just keep what it's doing. Uh, keep doing what, it, what it's doing against Brook with flanking advantage. Ooh, that twenty-four to hit. Mm -hmm. Ah, there we go. Uh, eleven. Bludgeoning damage. Uh, I... I guess they're both grappling you. Um, oh, no. <laughs> uh, it's pulled apart. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, what, do you have one crab attached to each leg currently? Does that mean I have to do two grappling checks? Uh, well, you can only you only get one per turn, so yeah. Even if you if you break one, you will still need to esca escape the second one. Uh, Pip. Well, <clears throat> I need you to roll oh. dexterity saving throw. All right. <laughs> you're you're right at this. Like you're basically being catapulted on the other side of the raft. <laughs> I don't even know if this is gonna add my modifier, but we'll see. <laughs> uh, n nope. Okay, that's 13. Ooh, 13 meets it and beats it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, um, oh, it's actually, it's actually a 12. Uh, it's actually beyond that, whoops. Um, but yeah, yeah. Uh, you're fine. So like you you slide down a little bit on the wet wood, but you pull so you, you pull yourself back up and you avoid uh, sliding all the way into the water. Okay, Pip's gonna try and jump to shore. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's easy enough. A little uh, and we'll move for you. over this way uh, and look at what's going on. Uh, Pip felt like this this mental connection that he's had with Squeak over the last. Uh, Several months just disappear. Mm -hmm. Not several months. Sometime. <laughs> just disappear. <laughs> um, and oh boy. They're both gra grappling Brook, huh? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do what you uh, gotta do. Take me with them. <laughs> Is there. <laughs> Out of the loud. All right. Uh, so I was here, move 10, so I could get here possibly? Mm hmm Okay. Pip is gonna try something. <laughs> okay. Pip is going to try and pull Brook over here uh, with his telekinesis. All right. This, this um, is something that Brook can fail? I don't know if like yes. the crabs can... Uh, yeah, it's a interesting. Okay, yeah. So, ha! Huh. Cheesy. I like that. Yeah. Because it's a saving throw. It's not a contested check like a normal grapple or anything. And yeah, you yeah. can always choose to fail a save. Brooke yeah, can I choose mean, to, to uh, lose I, it. I feel like um, the crabs should be able to at least try to hold on well, to them because they've got a pretty good grip. What about this one? This one could just rotate, basically. Yeah. Like spin around and hold onto the uh, the, because because the grapple is mm. only broken yeah, if it's out of its reach. Thing. Right. Right. Um, okay. So yeah, you get him out of one. And then the next thing I wanted to do, is there a rock on the shoreline like, around here or so? I didn't, I didn't so actually. Some sort of 
So I didn't actually hear if Dennis was consenting to oh. this. Um, oh, yeah. But, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's got a new character concept ready to go and with this. <laughs> Consent is important. Okay, you want a rock? Is there is there some sort of rock or or uh, one to five pound object <laughs> right next to me over here? Uh, I can see one. <laughs> I I gave it a roll and right there isn't here. there isn't really uh, there are small pebbles here, um, but like you know the, the really small ones that wouldn't even be very good for. Um, uh, skipping on the water surface they might be depending uh, depending on what you're about to do they might be a little too small hmm Pontifex has a small knife that you've seen him use before he used it to cut up the ooplu earlier is he within <laughs> range for whatever you're doing uh I I don't think so hold on if there's not a a one pound rock then <laughs> I will. I'm not catapulting the magic rock. It's too important. <laughs> Catapult to Pontifex's orb. <laughs> Do I see the knife? I mean, I don't think it's like hidden. I think it's like on his belt or something. Is there a rule against using catapult with a, an item on someone else's person? Yeah, there is. What if it's willing? Because <laughs> it's cool. Sure, uh, let's say that if it, uh, the target is willing. Because uh, I think the point is so that you can't just, like, disarm people right. willy-nilly or, like, uh, steal something hugely valuable from them at will. I, I was about to say you could call out to Pontifex, but you can't. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> True. Uh, Wasn't there... Did Was there a... Uh... Yeah, One of their arms got this. ripped off, right? Yeah, oh. it sunk mm -hmm. into the water. Uh, but like I said earlier, they're, they're, they do glisten uh, yeah, in the light of Brook. Now that Brook is off the off the raft, uh, there is a direct line between him and the light of his sword. So yes, uh, there will be like a shimmering spot right here. Oh, hell yeah. Beat yeah, them with I'm their going own limb. To, yeah, I'm, Pip is going to reach his <laughs> hand out and... His hand trembles a little bit, and beneath the water, that that shimmer just like shifts and reflects a little bit as I'm catapulting it up in this direction. With his own arm, that is With so its metal. Own arm. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> um. So, do I have to roll oh. dexterity saving throw? I think for this one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And if this succeeds, then the second one has to do it. Cool angle. Uh, yeah. Wow, okay. All right, let's go for it. So, the, the, the stats over here. Dexterity. Yes. Hmm, 15. That succeeds. And the second one. Uh, 12. That fails. All right, roll 48. That's the weak one, too. Crab one, right? Yep. Crab organ. Crab. Crab organ. organ. <laughs> That's seventeen points. Seventeen crab damage. Okay. Crab um, damage. <laughs> uh, the, this one <clears throat> cannot get out of the way because it's holding on to Brook. Uh, it's almost getting dragged along with the push of your telekinetic powers, um, and so it doesn't even see it coming. It just goes. Dunk! And then you hear the, the sound of all these pieces of metal exploding and rattling on top of the raft and then off into the water. Choom, choom, choom. Uh, as its own arm... <laughs> yes. <laughs> ...clashes onto it, onto it and yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's into pieces. Alright, that's it. Okay, cool. Um, here you... Oh my god, Austin! What? I wanted to give you inspiration, but you already have two! <laughs> give it to someone else! Uh, oh, okay. Crabspiration? Clawspiration. Oh, hey! Uh, <laughs> You're the Matt. only one who has inspiration. Matt, so didn't I anyone. say. Yeah, Matt, uh, um, we talked. I said I want to give you inspiration for the detect thoughts from last time, didn't I? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. I forgot Here about you go. Uh, I'm, I'm going to give mine to Dennis because his rolls have been bad. <laughs> <laughs> and also, you, you, 
he's the last one who will be do doing a recap for a while. <laughs> Thoughtspiration and uh, craftspiration. <laughs> okay. Uh, awesome. All right, all right. So we're moving on to the crab number two with uh, this one. Uh, barely got out of the way of <laughs> one mechanical claw, claw arm being flung its way. Um, it's going to get a little bit closer, and Brooke has been slippery, has been just managing to, to get out of its grasp multiple times. Um, uh, so he has mercy? Let me, let me just roll for this, because I don't think... Like, what, what is their intelligence? No, they're not able to, like, consider the flanking possibilities, so I'll just pick uh, at random, but weight it towards Brooke. Oh, but it's Alex! Hey. <laughs> Why are you happy, Dennis? <laughs> hey. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> um. Okay, we'll it will attempt to attack. Uh, what is uh, the, oh, it's not? This one has not been hurt at all, and it does have two arms. The first attack is a twelve to hit. Uh, that depends on if I have my shield out. <laughs> Uh, um, I I can't think of any occasion during this fight when you would have needed to have both hands free. So yeah, I don't think you've been swinging your stick with two hands, right? I guess. All right. Yeah. So no. Okay, and the second one is a uh, nineteen. That'll hit. For thirteen bludgeoning damage. Oh my goodness. And Talix is, <laughs> Talix is uh, <laughs> grappled. Oh, oh, oh. I dropped. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, and yeah, all of a sudden, uh, Talix, you saw something metal getting flung your way, and like that caught your attention for a moment. And before you, 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 you could see it, uh, one of the other crabs is now uh, attacking you and closes one of its uh, uh, pair of claws onto your leg, and you feel yourself bleeding um, a lot through that newly opened wound, and you feel pained uh, in your position. Uh, Pontifex, you are off the raft, so um, you're free to move and act. Uh, he's going to step to get directly beneath uh, Book Jam. Uh, and uh, can I just let go of Mage Hand for free? Is there any. Can I just not maintain the spell? Huh. Well, you can do that with concentration spells. Let's, let's just say you can. Then he'll. He'll drop Mage Hand and see if he can catch Janiel, or just let Janiel hit the floor behind him, that's fine. Uh, okay, sure, yeah, it, it just uh, falls... Oh, <laughs> on your head. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I think, like, as it falls, he, like, throws his hood back, and the book just falls into his hood. Uh, excellent. Uh, then he's going to... Uh, catch... Huh. I forgot about this. It's an action to do this. Uh, so he's going to cast Flaming Sphere um, as an action and is going to Scribe Wizard it into Thunder Damage. Whoa. Okay. Uh, so he makes Thunder Sphere. Um, and he's going to put... Uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, it's going to put it right um, here where I'm pointing. I don't have a icon for it. The um, cursor is here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, thunder spear. Um, yeah, loud ball. Uh, I think it's just like, uh, yeah, it's like an orb, but it's just like, uh, like a wobbling force ball that's just like making a, a really obnoxious vibrating sound. Um, I think like the water is like, yeah, it emits dubstep. I think the water is like buckling beneath it. Uh, yeah, it's just this ball of pure noise. Um, and then as a bonus action, I can ram it into the one next to it, um, which I'm going to do. Uh, so it must make a dexterity saving throw. Okay. Dexterity. 11. 
Uh, that fails. It's going to take 2d6 thunder damage. Uh, hey, does water conduct electricity <laughs> here? Or... Thunder, not uh, electricity. Thunder, yeah. yeah, thunder is uh, more about sound. Um, sound. Just, like Sonic vibrations. Damage. Yeah. Okay. Uh, five points of thunder damage. Lightning is the actual electricity damage type. Uh, yeah, five? It's a little confusing. Yeah, five points. Okay, this is the first damage that this particular crab has sustained. Um, yep. And yeah, you, you can hear the insides of this machine rattling uh, as this sphere of energy just hits it on the side and one of its legs just goes choom, and it's flung into the river. Uh, and then I think Pontifex is, um, is shouting at just all of you, trying to like shout over the dubstep ball to uh, hold it in place. Just hold it next to the ball. Working on it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if it uh, if this thing ends its turn, any creature that ends its turn within five feet of the ball has to make the save again. Okay. Within five feet uh, yeah, from its it current position. If it ends their turn within five feet. Okay. All right then. Um, at the beginning of the round, nothing else happens. So Brooke, I need you to roll nothing. You're already off the raft. Um, <laughs> and yeah, you're just down in the water at about. Uh, so for you, it would be just below chest height. Oh. Um, none wow. of the crowds are holding you anymore. That's good. That's good. <clears throat> I guess since I'm already in the water, no reason to get back up on the raft. Can I just overhead swing onto the crab? You can. Uh, you're tall enough that the water at this height it doesn't really... It, 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 it slows you down from moving from where you are, but the, the upper part of your body is entirely free to swing. Do you need uh, a die? Oh, you got it. No, 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 I got it this time. <laughs> 19 hits? Um... I need... Oh. Oh. Oh, oh. How do oh. I move one die? Um... Uh, right click. Oh, yeah, right click on this. Yeah, the buttons. Thing. <laughs> I... Uh, Every single time... Consistent. Yeah, it's always been 14 damage with you. Yes. <laughs> 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 uh, three radiant damage Oops. and the rest normal. Okay, at this total, um, that is sufficient for you to again slice right through one of its uh, larger claws, and this happens to be. Uh, it's just gonna be like even. Okay, uh, this happens to be the claw that is holding Talix. Uh, who is no longer grappled? Uh, the in fact uh, the the the, the claw thing is just stuck to uh, on Talix's leg, like still holding mm. down. Anything else in your turn, Brook? I think that's it. Okay, uh, Tekka, you are on the raft, so I do need. Uh, you're not being grappled right now, right? I believe. No. Okay, I need a dexterity saving throw from from you. To hold your balance. Okay. Yeah. Oh, sorry. That does not count. Or well, we can make it count. Let's just add plus five. Okay. Uh, sixteen. Uh, sixteen is enough. Um, you, you like you, you, the the raft is tilting further and further to the right. Um, but you just you just make it. <sighs> okay, <laughs> standing on the edge of this raft. Uh, Tekka, oh boy, oh boy, this is a rough place to be in. Uh, Tekka spins around and spins his core staff in the process and uh, rams the like rod side of the core staff into the mechanical cap crab three. Okay, here we go. Pick up. 
50. 15 hits. All right. Let's do damage. And I am going to, as part of this, do a maneuvering attack, which ultimately results in, I guess, pushing Talix and letting him move as a reaction. Oh. With half what? his movement speed. Yeah. Uh... Okay. That's cool, but this crab is ready to chop me, isn't it? What, what do you mean? If I move away from it, won't I get... Well, you, you don't take... Uh, you don't take... Without provoking attacks. opportunity attacks, oh. yes, that's part oh. of this effect. Okay. Interesting! Nice. Alright. Well, if I had known that, I would have dipped. Health <laughs> 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 um, is speed. Yeah, you're no longer grappled, so you do have your speed back. Okay. Let's just say Tekka gently shoves me off the side of the raft here. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that is 40 damage. How many? 40. Four 14 damage? <laughs> 14. Yeah. I, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm just seeing the 5. That's what the... Is it a 9 plus 5? It's, it's 9 plus 5. Because there's oh, because superior, maneuver. Superior. Okay. Nice. Okay, okay, okay. Tech is so cool. <laughs> <Fourteen>. <laughs> and then I do a little flurry of blows. Ba -ba -ba -bam. Uh, All right. Um, on your on your first attack, uh, making contact, there is so much force into into your that you put into your staff that it just knocks off one of its arms. Nice. And nineteen hits, I presume. Nineteen does hit. Okay. It's been like what two years, Austin, and I still giggle at forty. <laughs> forty. What do you think? That is eleven. Um. Oh, okay. It's um. You you land the blow from above, and it's uh, it's metal shell dents inward where you hit it. Uh, it's uh. It's barely, it's barely still in one piece. Okay, and then the final one. Here we go. Wait, what? <laughs> yeah, the third blows is two attacks. So now we hit for the shovel end here. Let's see how it goes. Is this... Uh, that probably doesn't hit, I could guess. Twelve doesn't. Yep, that's fine. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Uh, but since one of the flurry blows attacks hits, I could do one more thing and push it 15 feet if it fails a strength saving throw. Oh. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, okay. okay. So in this turn, you've pushed Talix. Yeah. Made three, three attacks. Three or four attacks. Three, three attacks. Three. And also shoved him. Tech is so cool. <laughs> what is like, he? action surge, except it's only level four. Yeah, don't worry, monks get crazier. <laughs> Where does the shove come from? Um, uh, open hand open technique, hand. it's called. Mm. Yeah. At first. Whenever you hit what? with your flurry of blows, you can impose one of these effects, and yeah, and he doesn't take any additional action to do. Damn, okay, do you see a strength saving throw? Yeah. <laughs> Six. All right. Yeah, just kind of picks it up with the shovel and flings it off the Jum! raft. Just <laughs> catapult it into the water. <laughs> that is Tekka's turn. Okay. Um, oh, it's his <laughs> turn again. Um, oh, he does have plenty of movement in the water, though. Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, despite it just flinging this thing off the raft, uh, mere seconds later, it climbs back on uh, from this side. Um, does it know? Uh, it doesn't know. It doesn't know who to prioritize. Um, so you're fine. You'll be a fine target. It only has one arm, so only one attack, but it's flanking with advantage. 
Uh, uh, oh, uh. no. Ah, last minute nat 20? <laughs> oh my god. Okay, it's not too bad. Um, da, 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 plus... That is 15 bludgeoning damage. Ah. <laughs> okay. Taka. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Listen, I'm he's not, he's not my um, and he's grappled. By both? I know only by that one. They're just uh, just by uh, just by crab number three. Right? Yeah. 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 This one was grappling Talix. Uh, speaking of. Uh, Talix, you're off the boat. I don't need saves from you. Take your turn. Crap, I wasn't planning to make it this far. <laughs> <laughs> Crab! Uh... Man, Talix, what can Talix do? I mean, I don't think spike growth works. I, it doesn't technically say that it doesn't work. <laughs> Purify food and drink. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I'm just... The spell doesn't say that it doesn't work, but I'll assume that it doesn't work. Um, so... Oh, because it's in the water? Or because it's on the raft? Right, right. Unless I can turn the raft into th thorny wood. <laughs> Honestly, it's made of wood. Uh, wood is tree-like. I'm, I'm not... The ground at 20 foot radius center in a point within range, twists and sprouts, hard spikes and thorns. I'd say I guess so. I would be kind of bad for everyone. Hmm. I wouldn't let it happen on water, but I'd let it happen on the raft. <clears throat> No, that's a bad idea. I changed my mind. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do anything at a range. Um, Could you pick up a pebble and throw it at a crab? <laughs> I've got it. <laughs> <laughs> um, here's what I'll do. Talix is going to uh, swim out to Brook and just put a hand on him and just cast Cure Wounds at first level. Hey. And just... Just tell him, do what you do, Brooke. Uh, <laughs> so... Talix has no idea. Okay. How long did Sanctuary last? Uh, as soon as you attacked, it wore <clears throat> off. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, heal seven. And get in there. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> Wait, Thanks. oh, one is gone. Uh, Pip. Okay. Uh, Pip is going to look over towards this crab that is uh, currently grappling Tekka and is going to uh, extend a hand out towards it with its with it, uh, his doll in his other hand and just say and we'll try and cast Phantasmal Force on this crab it needs to make an intelligence saving throw intelligence well well, fails. It's a good uh, roll. I want it to believe that the water that it is currently in is boiling, boiling hot, just bubbling all around it. Oh no! You're cooking my crabs. I'm cooking your crab. <laughs> um. Okay, phantasmal uh, force, craft an illusion, blah blah blah. Okay. So it'll take. 1d6 psychic damage, but believes it to be fire damage, I guess. Okay. Is it now or on its turn? It's on my turn. Okay, roll for it. I don't even know if psychic damage affects this thing, but... That's six. 
Um... So it is psychic damage, but it's just perceived differently. Correct. So uh, wait, is this Phantasmal Force? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, it does... Uh, the, the damage that they think it is, um, is it... Uh, if they have resistances or vulnerabilities, it takes those into... It. So, like, of... if it has, like, resistance or it's immune to psychic, uh, it, it doesn't matter for that point. It is as if it took fire damage. Well, it says the target perceives the damage weaknesses. as a type appropriate. So. Yeah, it perceives it, but it is it, but psychic I don't damage. Think... Like it, it is specifically psychic says it's psychic damage. Yeah. Hmm. Like it's perceived differently, so that it doesn't break right, the right, illusion. It does psychic damage, but I thought there was um, a thing about it where it specifically involves resistances and vulnerability. I don't think so. Maybe. Uh, which does mean that it is immune. Okay. <laughs> Um, is there anything about, like, fear? Is it frightened? Uh, no. It just knows that the water around it is boiling, so I don't know how okay. it feels about that. <laughs> Not happy. Alright, is that your turn? Uh, I guess for my bonus action, I'll also try and pull Tekko away if he's willing. Sure. It'd be over here. Which breaks the grapple. Yeah, onto yeah. the there's the, there's only scattered remains, not even a, a, a corpse. Uh, so you can yeah, I can definitely stand there, and the, the grapple is broken. That's it. Number two does a saving throw. <laughs> um, hmm, hmm. Uh, Pontifex, when does the damage happen from the sphere? Uh, at the end of its turn. Okay, so at the start of its turn, it falls off the boat, uh, mm. and, uh, um, but he, it has a swim speed, so it's actually fine, um, and it does not provoke opportunity attacks. Um, it only has one claw left, so it's much okay that's enough movement to get back to the surface and onto the boat um but it loses its action um so that's it it's gonna take the damage from the sphere now from the wub wub bubble yep I called it the wobble bobble for a little bit, but <laughs> wobble bobble. Ooh, ooh, oh! Max damage twelve. It's crab number two. Twelve is exactly the number you needed. There we go. Um, for it to also just um, it, it, you can hear the 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 gears inside it uh, spinning faster and faster, and then just choom, uh Blowing up from the inside out. I think I've got a noise. <laughs> yeah, there, yeah, there you go. <laughs> there, yeah, I didn't like a dumpster drop sound, but I've got that. <laughs> and Pontifex, your turn. Uh, okay, yeah, hell yeah. He's gonna, first thing first, he's gonna slam the, the wobble bubble back into the other one. Is it a save? Uh, is it an attack roll? Uh, it's a save. Uh, it is the the same save. Oh, oh, sorry. Um, the the one that died, it needed to make a save before it takes the damage. Oh. It might be relevant. Uh, it's a a dex save. Dex, yeah. Okay. It's a halberd, um, right? Dexterity is not its best stat. Um, eleven. Uh, no, it fails. Okay, so it it, it did explode, and then the this uh, crab crab three needs. To He's gonna slam it into that one. Ten. Yeah. Uh, then it also gonna take the. Damage. Another twelve. Let's go. Uh, uh, uh seven. Still. A seven. Yeah, Easy enough. Uh, so. To kill it. Yep. Oh, so, wow. um, nice. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, how would you like to do this? Uh... Just... <laughs> Sufficient answer. <laughs> <laughs> Crab rave. 
Yeah, there you go. Um, yeah, the fight ends uh, <clears throat> with a group effort. Uh, so how would the entire party like to do this? Pontifex is uh, slamming the, <laughs> the thunderous <laughs> bubble <laughs> <coughs> onto the crab. Uh, uh, the rest of you? Talix is bleeding into the water, passing out against Spoon. <laughs> <laughs> Pip is Pip's just the veins on his forehead are straining as he's trying to just tele telekinetically pull everyone out of the water. <laughs> In the midst of the wood. <clears throat> and, um... This is like right around the time when a raft is finally like entirely uh flipping all the way up. Uh so take it like for your final move. Um since this is like the, the finishing move, you can like sort of like jump up from it, or um, what would you like to do? Oh, I would like to save the raft before it flips over. But I don't know if that's possible. <laughs> um, well, then now that this thing actually blew up and you're over here, um, I guess yeah, there is a chance. So it was like in the process of toppling, but you can like run up on the opposite side. Yeah, I would to love to out. take that chance. Yeah, sure. <laughs> um, yeah, okay, you do that. You just run all the way up here. Um, and at the last moment, as this crab also explodes, and uh, the, the weight on the raft is, consider is considerably lessened, um, just before it reaches the, the final, uh, the, the point of no return, it shoom. 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 <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, I think I just haven't heard from Dennis. I think since I'm not even in range, I will just help Telex get out of the water. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and uh, combat is over. Oh, I think it's around my bone. I think it's around the bone. Uh, I need to get this thing off me. Okay, everyone. Everyone is hurt. Get close. Let's get on land. Is Jamie you okay? Uh, I think he'll like reach back into the into his hood. That's acting like a, a, a what's it called? <laughs> the baby carrier backpack. <laughs> baby back. <laughs> he pulls out Jam. Uh, yeah, looks. Uh, I think he's fine. Uh, well, let's, you let's all talk don't to look so good. That seemed to have gone pretty badly for you all. Yeah. Yeah. It Pip, focuses, uh, Pip focuses his mind on some of the debris and tries to just pull some of it in before it washes <laughs> away. Um. Okay. Yeah, you can pull some pieces. All the ones that, are, that I've managed to stick on the raft are still there, but uh, there aren't that many. Most of them have tumbled into the water and just use mm -hmm. like, the glow of Brooke's, of Brooke's sword um, to fish out some that are in the river before they wash out of sight and you have a little pile um it's you have one shell so you can kind of tell what they are supposed to 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 make when assembled together but uh for the most part it's just a bunch of junk are those initials on any of these pieces uh you OTH. flip over the big shell and at the bottom of it sure enough the same initials O dot th. Mm -hmm. I need to get up so for just five seconds. Okay. Have any of you seen the birds lately? Nope. No. no. That's what I can remember. Let's ask Tramiel. Uh, let's get away from the uh, shore. He's doing this. Have some way of tracking us. Professor, can you turn off that noise? It's rather distracting. What? <laughs> the, the wobble. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> water. I think. Uh, <laughs> I think he. Because it lasts for a little bit. I think he like just lowers it into the water until it's like this muffled, <laughs> pulsing thing. It just lowers it farther and farther into the water. And he makes like concentric circles, uh, uh, yeah. just rippling away. You. It's like one of those, like how on YouTube they'll always do the really crazy uh, spectrograms. Oh yeah. 
Yeah. There's a long the music. Yeah, it's definitely going to be Turn the entire like river that. into a subwoofer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. To start seeing some fish, it just... <laughs> oh, this could be the most efficient fishing method of all time. <laughs> just dunk this thing in the water and just watch them float to the surface. Maybe yep. There's a great, there is a few dead... a great disturbance in the forest. <laughs> There's a few dead fish that just float up to the surface. They're feeling like a million lives suddenly snuffed out. <laughs> Uh, and then, yeah, then I think it dissipates. Yeah, I mean, if uh -oh. you want to use a second level spell to fish, um, and and your feature to change its damage type, I'd, I'd allow it. No, 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 he's, he's, he's going to peter out the thunder. <laughs> I feel like it just coming to a sudden stop might be jarring. Mm hmm Okay, let's get away from the shore. Take stock. Let's talk to Jamil, make sure he's good. I've got some questions for him, actually. Here, you do that. Uh, I'll tend to you all. Uh, I'm fine. I, I have something. Oh. Uh, might be more powerful and uh, take less energy. It just I takes some time. It. Okay. okay. Sure. And, uh, nothing against you, Professor. It's just. No, uh, no, this particular... isn't my area of expertise. I am supposed to shatter things with the power of primal magic. None of this fixing people thing. This is just <laughs> an old party trick. Okay. Uh, so if we don't mind, let's all stay close around for a second and uh, I'll work on that. <laughs> and uh, yeah, let's ask Jamiel if he's noticed anything that we haven't noticed as far as mechanical creatures, and I'd also like to ask him about the sea. He's on your face. Oh, <laughs> okay. Oh, he's on but I've got that word to do. Uh, someone else read him. Okay, yeah, you open up the book. Talix will be casting Prayer of Healing over the next ten minutes. Um... Okay, can you all see this text over here? <laughs> Where? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's okay. uh, out in the field. Yeah. <laughs> Based on the location where we found you, I somehow doubt that. <laughs> 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 you know, that is a foreign point. <laughs> <Stay corrected. laughs> that is fair. You caught me. This is what happens when the professor does not think before he speaks. Sure. Hey, in all honesty, I had hoped to use you as bait to draw them off of them. They seem just interested in you, but as soon as you are uh, airborne, they seem to not care anymore. So, uh, they wouldn't thank me so soon, but sure. Hey, Jamil, have you ever, uh, do you have any memories of exploring the sea around Ladaria? You remember anything about it? Hmm. What about anything about a crystal castle? Anything about the the witch of the river we met? Have you met her? Um, I need a moment to check my notes. In the meantime, Pip is just looking out to uh, the river where they just had that encounter. And 
is sort of looking around and he tries snapping his fingers a couple of times. Oh. To bring a... Oh. Greek. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for the others, it's hard to, to say that he's missing because he's not visible most of the time. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if you would have seen him actually get... Uh, did we get him. I wasn't sure. A pile of gore. He did explode. Yeah. In a pile That's of gore. true. Uh, so you know what? You probably <laughs> would have seen it. Yeah, at least some of you. Oh. Uh, I'm. I'm sorry, Puff. Is there some way to bring him back? I'm familiar with wizards who is familiar as it was popular at the college but uh, they had to use a bunch of weird incenses and stuff is it as, as soon as you say that uh pip snaps up and dives into his backpack and starts pulling out some things uh oh. namely uh various herbs um and holds them out <laughs> yeah, it is not one I know how to do, but Pip shakes his head. Uh, is it an affirmative shake or a negative shake? Negative shake. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. Wait, it's, is he holding them out to the professor? I, I'm confused. He's just holding them out. <laughs> As oh. if presentary. Ta da! Uh, there is usually some sort of incantation, or uh, this is uh, assuming he is similar. I've never seen a wizard summon something like him, but uh, usually birds they have a proclivity you know, towards owls for some reason. I have a feeling your granny would know what to do. Yeah, I was about to say, can't you message her? Send her a letter? Hmm, Pip shrugs. He was usually her way of keeping keeping in touch with her, wasn't he? Pip nuts. Don't you have uh, some stone that you got from the from the lady? The communication stone, yes? Pip nods slower. It, what is it? Did it let you do something? I remember we had a moment with this. Pip fishes it out of his pouch and then holds it up and puts it next to his head and concentrates really hard and tries to speak telepathically. Eh, uh, nothing. Nothing. Oh. Thought that we had used this at some point. Uh, perhaps not. Pip, uh... Sort of puts a finger up as if he has an idea. And, uh, again, plucks another hair out from his, uh, his head. Um, and you can see where he had plucked a hair out the day before or earlier. Um, that hair is already starting to grow back, um, rather quickly. Um, and he pulls out another few strands and wraps it around the stone and gently, it, the stone gently hovers in the air and lands in Talix's palm. And you hear, uh, can you hear me now? In your head. Hmm. Yes, I, I hear you, Pip. It works. I think I might have a way to get Squeak back, but it'll take some time. Uh, like a ritual you gotta cast? Something like that. Well, if it's herbs you need, I might even have some that would be of use. I've got some on me. I've just never done this before. I've never seen them, um, explode like that. Hopefully he comes back in one piece. Yeah, well, his sword can do unusual things. I wouldn't doubt it. 
Alex is a little uncomfortable. <laughs> Um, I think Pontifex is going to pull from his box, um, or from his backpack, uh, the alms box, which is, like, where he usually keeps that pearl, uh, and he's going to, like, fish around through it, and he's going to pull out two, uh, completely unused blocks of incense. It is, if this could help, you are more than welcome. He doesn't like the holy stuff. He says in Talix's mind. <laughs> It uh, says to like, uh, yeah, let yeah, the other uh, repeat what Pip says. Right. Oh, that is fair. Really maybe, maybe not the sort of thing he's looking for. I see. Uh, we're not. Uh, so you uh, mean? What about need... the spice? That is devilish stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Something can help. Mm. <laughs> if anything was made out of sulfur and brimstone, it would be this. That's, that's a fair point, actually. <laughs> what do you all think uh, Jamil means by this? I mean... I mean, did you notice think... anything about her smell? I don't think she so. Could... Jamil could smell the river from some distance, which was concerning, and we simply glossed over it at the time, but this is now a recurring theme. Like a hag. Well, Jamil's ability to smell this. The Bloodhound book. I don't know if Talix knows that it's a hag or not, I guess. Um, the word that's been used is witch. All right. A witch. So, what now? Well, I'm still setting things up here. Actually, I guess there are no material components. I've just got to pray for 10 minutes straight. Then we should rest. I will build a fire. Dry our coal. No, don't, don't go away. Just stay close to me for 10 minutes. Then we can make the fire. <laughs> <laughs> Promise, it'll be worth it. <laughs> you can uh, play with Ollie. <laughs> okay. I'll target Ollie with my prayer uh. of healing too. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> as you're in the process of finishing your spell, Talix, uh, um, a few more words appear uh, in the pages of uh, uh, of the Outlander's Guide to, L to Lidaria. Um. If you have any more questions, I guess you'd have time for for them. But otherwise, that's all that uh, that he can say. I, love I do music. think there's a. <laughs> I do think there's a common thread. Yeah, Talix doesn't have anything else to ask. Okay. Is your spell done? I have to pee. <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait five minutes. And finally. <laughs> even though it <laughs> feels doing, like, like an eternity. <laughs> Still twirling around. It's a small worst bladder. Case, <laughs> yeah, worst case, Pips, there's a river right in front of you. Ah, uh, but the spell is complete. Oh. Ah, uh, if I can get this to roll, come on! You can do it. There. I have to find just the right spot. Uh, okay. Everyone heals ten. Whoa. Yay! I'm at full. <laughs> Yay! Hooray! 
Okay. Um. Hmm. There is a good point that we can reach uh, um, to end the session on, but I just need to know, like, if you're doing anything else, and if you're intending to proceed to continue with the raft. Tekka uh, would like to, but yeah, Telix would too. Yeah, the raft seems to be the fastest way for sure. Okay. I mean, how many? Robot crabs can they really have? <laughs> <laughs> if the number of birds is anything to go off of, a lot. Oh, well, if we go on land, we'll probably just send robot turtles or something. <laughs> that sounds easier to manage. Yeah, I mean, turtles was a bad example now that I think about Those it. But... Resilient little things. Can I have a religion, religion check from Talix Pontifex in Brook? Okay. Sure. Oh, about the crab. I don't know yet. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Ah. Oh, wait, I can't increase my counter because I don't know which one of these numbers is real. Oh, oh, I'll do it. do it for me. Uh, uh, I see eight net 20s. Oh, yep. wait. Now you have nine. Okay. It's 16 for me. Okay. Uh, Talix is the only one who, like, um, just comes to the possible um, hypothesis. Uh, the, the previous creatures, mechanical ones that you guys saw, were ravens. And these ones are crab. Crabs. Uh, and you know that they are not awfully Darian make. So it, uh, the, the thought comes to the mind that perhaps... Uh, with how specific both the crab and the ravens were uh, in, 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 in their particular chosen shape. Uh, you're wondering if perhaps they are modeled after the Plornan Pantheon. Yeah. Oh boy, it's a good thing we haven't encountered the dragon. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Very <laughs> yes, of course. Not so intimidating. Have you met a fairy I'd dragon? I'm worried before? about the lion, though. <laughs> what? Wait. Okay. Does fairy dragon still exist. Uh, hmm. Italics would know that there are some thought to live in uh, in Campbell. All right. The weather. He he wouldn't know for sure. <laughs> hey, but, uh, okay. Hey, After the one that is to be concerned about is perhaps a wyvern that is a uh, is the domain of metals and such. I could see some sort of connection there, and that is spooky. Well, yeah, I wouldn't want to encounter one as it is, but they're still machines, still made by someone. They're and limited by what they're capable of doing. Ample proof that they are, uh, they fare poorly against the thunder magic, so... <sighs> Maybe we could come into... Uh, although perhaps whenever we are in uh, Simleilan, we find some sort of magic dealer person. Maybe there are wands or scrolls for sale that we can do something. I think if everyone had something like this, it could be useful. We definitely need to figure out, well, or hope to find some information about who's even capable of doing this. We don't even know who our enemy is. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah. Okay. Um, you give you gave the raft a little bit of time to just drain the water that uh, ended up on top. Uh, you make sure that, uh, that uh, uh, the damage it sustained uh, is fully repaired. And uh, uh, by the time you are rested and Talix's magic has patched you up, 
you are ready to resume your journey. Uh, this was the night between the 6th and the 7th of Amur. Um, and it's at some point during this night that the rain finally stops. And as for the following morning, and the entirety of the following day, your 6th day of travel. Uh, no, your 5th day of travel. Um, it turns out that traveling down the river actually feels quite pleasant when it's not raining. You can see far in every direction, and the rolling hills covered in blooming flowers are quite a pleasant sight. Not to mention that all this open space lets you enjoy the comfort of being able to spot anything that might be approaching you. This time you're keeping a much closer look uh, uh, on the surface of the river, especially at night. Uh, but the following day and the following night pass without uh, anything disturbing you. By the middle of your sixth day of travel, on the 8th of Amua, uh, as your raft reaches an another bend in the river, you know that this is the spot where you should abandon it. Uh, traveling down the river any further would take you away from Aria and towards the sea. But if you were to, um, to leave here and continue on foot, uh, you should arrive in Aria just uh, before nightfall. Yeah, we haven't been counting those. We can do that at the end, uh, in between sessions. Um, so are you good to, to proceed? Are you good to leave the raft behind? That makes the most sense. Like, yeah, yeah, once we get to the map and map and sees, you know, hey, go down river from here, probably not. <laughs> yeah, once we get to the bend, we'll, mm -hmm. I think we should. Yeah. It would appear that, um, assuming you stay on pace, uh, uh, that the detour you took actually saved you uh, about a day of travel instead of costing you time. Uh, nice. So the raft was, uh, uh, was a good idea. Goodbye, raft. You let it just... Uh, do, you, do you leave it parked on the shore or do you let it just float down the river? I think we should just send it off into oblivion. Set it free. <laughs> no! See that no one shall cross that whole no. thing. No! We should put our names on it and then anyone else who uses it can put theirs on, their names on it. It does have it Pips. Of, community raft. He does have Pips of, of writings on it. Oh, it does. People will find my, <laughs> my arcane notes <laughs> on this mysterious <laughs> raft. Oh, we can leave it here. Maybe someone wants to go down the rest of the way to the bay. This would be a lucky find for him. Sure. Okay. Let me There's pack a family this up. raft that seats five. <laughs> <laughs> Six and a half. You are on this spot. And all you have to do is just travel in a straight line towards Arya. And um, sure enough, you're not on a, on a path, but these hills are completely free of obstacles. It's just a, um, an easy track, slightly downhill. And eventually you spot in the distance, far beneath you, the outer buildings of Aria. The first Plurnan colony to have been founded on Lidaria. I need a perception check from everyone. Uh-oh. Um, which, uh, which nation founded Arya? Zvarda. Okay. It is uh, the sense. nation that, uh, uh Jamiel is from. Yeah. And so, yeah, Zvarda was the, the, the country that discovered the new continent and also the first to establish a settlement. Help me. <laughs> Here I come. Thank you. I got... Let's roll. Help me. Please roll. <laughs> Please. Please press roll. Oh, no. I should have just restarted the game so oh. this wouldn't have happened. Oh. Sorry, you didn't roll it. <laughs> it we still have that 20 bot turned on. It's it counts. It. it counts. It counts. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> With three, you need to add it. Yep, yep, I've added it. Oh, okay. Wow. Oh, such emotions. Okay. So it's going to be both Brooke and Tekka. Um, to sort of like 
as everyone is looking down at the colony below, um, they pay attention to uh, to the birds nearby. Um, they are tiny. There's about a dozen of them flying from flower to flower, searching for nectar. Their feathers shimmer with beautiful green and blue hues. And as you um, continue walking, the two of you are the ones who notice that they all just suddenly fly up in the air, probably spooked uh, by your presence. But what's strange about it is that they, uh, instead of just scattering away from you, all of them seem to be flying straight in the direction of the colony. None of these birds are metallical. <laughs> <laughs> metallic, metallic. Did they say That's what anything? they want you to believe. Did they say oh, yes. you gross people? Uh, Pip, uh, yeah, you hear many, <coughs> many of them just like as as they chirp away. Um, they say the word uh, "worn." Oh. <laughs> uh, Talix, you'll hear in your mind. They're warning the colony about us. They don't like us. We Do probably smell bad. Mm. Do, will this mean something to me? I don't think Brooke or Tech has said anything. Mm -hmm. Sparta is like the it's that's the Confederacy, right? Yes. Yeah. And Zvarta isn't aren't they like the kind of militaristic one? Uh, no, they one? are the very advanced one. The mentalistic one is the gnomes. Um, oh, right, obviously. And I, I guess Baromia also has the wyverns. Uh, uh, but yeah, Nuzvarda is the one that's uh, that's very, uh, very bureaucratic, very slow to get anything done, but also very advanced. Mm. That was it. Never mind. Um, and Talix. Do I know about guard birds? Is that a thing? Just roll a history check. Okay. Hmm. Nope. That's brand new information to you. And you know Arya pretty well, so you feel like mm. you'd you'd know if it was the case, if there was anything like that uh, uh, going on. I mean, they, we probably just scared him off, Pip. What do you mean, warn the colony? Mm. Are you it might not be the colony, but they said warn. Oh, maybe they're warning the rest of the birds. I don't know. Or were they warning us? Oh, there's so much that can be uncovered from that one word. <laughs> oh. hmm. Are you? Well, hopefully, we get a chance to catch up with him later. So we'll be continuing. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. <laughs> mm -hmm. Heading into town. Sure. What's the worst that could happen? By the time you are about half a mile away uh, from the colony, you spot a single large leaf fluttering in the air um, just a little bit a a ahead of you in a way that seems somewhat unnatural it what? swirls in place fluttering from side to side as if caught in an air current that just won't let it drop to the ground I Alex who? you know what this is yeah do I know who would be casting it? you have one guess Help! <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um, um, there yeah, is I'll, an I'll... exceptionally powerful cleric in Aria. Um, oh right. Well, sort of. I, I'll have to. Okay. Mm -hmm. Whatever. I'll walk up and take the leaf. Okay. You snatch the leaf. <laughs> you snatch the leaf off <laughs> of the air and you turn it around. Uh, um, there is a single word written on it. Hide. We need to go. And that's where we'll end the session. Oh, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Okay. The birds wow. warned us and then a leaf did? Yeah. <laughs> huh. Nature is warning us. 
<laughs> about I think what? we should just abandon this whole Arya thing and just go straight to Simle Elon. <laughs> like all of this. <laughs> Back to the river. Hmm. What? Spooky. That's interesting. I don't what? remember who the cleric is in Arya. <laughs> all right. So, the the name. I didn't write that, did I? <laughs> the name. Uh, this is also the person that wrote oh, no, your letter ra that. lately. Okay. And will the Twilight Sun. All right. <laughs> I'll have oh, to man. ask you more about that Classic and will. This was really good. Yeah. Good session. Ooh, what an ending. <laughs> Yay, we got what? to it. <laughs> Sorry, I meant to finish this at five, but like at five we ended the combat and I was like, I can't get to it. I can do it. I can do it. <laughs> Okay. We have to stay around. We when have to talk to the, the last we have to heal time up before the long rest. We gotta do this. <laughs> when is the last time we actually counted off our rations? Uh we haven't done that for the we entirety the of the journey. Right. I, I, I did it one night. night. I did it the first night. I, I think I might know. And I, I didn't know. do it for the for, for I didn't mark a ration off because of the Uplu. So okay. does that leave three days? Mm -hmm. It leaves uh, for uh, me? So the entire journey was six. Six. So oh. it leaves four. Four okay. for me. Okay. And five for everyone if we haven't been removing them. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think I did the first day as well. I yeah, think that I'm was, pretty that sure was that last was session. Someone got us all rations in the first one. Oh yeah, I didn't really think we should have been like hunting and stuff like we usually do. We should have picked up those Fishing. fish. No, wait. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't want that. That was uh, awesome uh, brain talk. fix is 10, 10 days of rations. So if, if I need to share these with anyone, it's fine. So uh, when Pip said he really had to go pee, that was... I also really had to go pee. <laughs> oh. I'm going to go pee. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Yeah. All have right. A great session. Bye. Good night. Bye-bye. <laughs> <clears throat> Wait, are we? We're still streaming. I I, I, I just ended the stream. <laughs> oh crap! I, we didn't say a proper goodbye. I was all like rations. But we also all said bye. It was sufficient. <laughs>